Hello everyone, welcome to Vassus of King's Grave and a happy new year. This week we are going to rate and review the Hobbit movie, the third Hobbit movie, The Battle of the Five Armies and also have a discussion on the entire trilogy in general. I'm Vikram Agoba as 42 on the forums and joining me for this podcast are Brett. Hey, this is Brett White Raven on the forums. Patrick. Hey, this is Patrick. Patrick the Toll on the forums. Matthew. Hi, this is uh, Barak. 175 <laughs> Hi, this is Alex. I go by it as I win deal on the forums. Phew, I'm tired now. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need something. Let's take okay. a coffee. Let's dive into spoilers, guys. Let's dive into spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so we we're going to but... try do the first half of this podcast, or at least first 20 minutes of this podcast, spoiler-free, and that's spoiler-free of the movies, the books, and stuff like that. And then uh, try to do that as much as we can before we dive into the deep dive and spoiler filled stuff. So guys, why don't we start by rating the movie and the trilogy? Uh, uh, Brett, do you want to go first? I can. I would give the movie probably a three and the trilogy probably a three. Okay. Uh, Patrick? Well, I would say that uh, I put the, this movie specifically on a three but the trilogy as a whole as on a two um mainly because well i think i think my main beef with the whole trilogy is that they substitute all quaint and, and nice episodes in the book for action and like gratuitous action uh, and, and and i don't like that i i like the book as it was before like a, a cozy quaint book uh mm. We have a word for that specific feeling, or uh, 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 and uh, yeah, and, and we don't. In any case, that's my my feeling about the uh, the whole trilogy. One more thing is just so uh, I feel like Peter Jackson actually is is doing kind of a Lucas thing, you know, completely missing the point of what what we like by the first trilogy, and then making a, a prequel tr- trilogy that sort of sucks. But yeah, that's my my feeling about it. I might uh, disagree sorry. with you on that one, though. Okay. I might disagree with you. I, I think we're going to get to that later, but uh, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I don't think that's the case. Uh, Matthew, how about you? How would you rate this? Oh, um, it's an average film to me. Like That means I probably give it a three as well. Um, the whole trilogy, I would also probably put it a three um, because I can see what they wanted to do with it. I like the beginning... Uh, of the trilogy much more than the ending as well. I mean, I like, and in this last film, I like the uh, ending and the beginning of the film because they, they are very, they're very strong and they're very close to the material of the book. Um, and yeah, in the, it's, it's just that it drags in the middle for me. Um, there's the, the, the battle is like, it's not a big deal in the, in the book, right? It's, it's just one mm-hmm. page and a half of something and then yeah you know it's it's stretched out in the film version to one hour and a half or something and at some point you just don't don't care who is fighting what and what's happening where and etc so it's like at some point i was thinking yeah you know can we get on with this but um overall i think i liked some of the performances um i like the music generally um but yeah so much too, too much CG and too long. So um, yeah, those are my gripes for that. Uh, at least you know, on a general level, I th- I'm sure we get into more specific stuff later on. But yeah, this is not the greatest adventure, you know, like the uh, animated film that came out. I think if you want to watch a, a closer adaptation you, and a shorter one, you sh- we should probably stick to the 70s, 80s uh, Rankin Bus. I think was it who did the the animated cartoon? Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts. Amber. So I saw it opening night, and I really thought that I had tempered my expectations, but I don't think I was able to do that because I gave it a two point five, which for me is 
essentially like a zero. Uh, no, I'm not a zero, but uh, that's probably the lowest I've ever rated anything. Um, and then I just watched it again last night. And it would bump that up to like a 2.9 maybe. <laughs> it wasn't as terrible as I remembered. Oh, I um, guess but. <laughs> but uh, and then for the series, I would probably give this trilogy like a 3 or maybe a 3.25 after some cocktails. <laughs> uh, dad? Oh, well, um, yeah, I'd give it a 3, I guess. Um, I, I had high expectation, um, high hopes um, for the other films. So I think I like those more because when I watched them, it's like, oh, this is going to be so good. And then it just. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Zach? Um, Yeah, for me, I'd probably give this film 3.5 out of 5 and the whole trilogy of 3. I did enjoy this one of the three the most. Um, I just the big thing for me in this whole trilogy is, is just the fact that I don't think that any of the films ever had any kind of identity to them they were trying to be way too many things may it be the light-hearted uh hobbit uh adaption that patrick wants or the super gritty tense uh action gratuitous madness that uh they're trying to they're trying to get with all the lord of the rings movie fans uh just i think at the very least this last movie did a better job of of self-identifying a bit because it did kind of commit more to the latter of those two even if that wouldn't have been the choice for me and for uh patrick and others like that um but just in general, like there are, there are parts of these movies that I've liked a lot, but I think just they for the most part they've been in turns disappointing and boring and just not enjoyable to watch to any degree uh, compared to the original uh, Lord of the Rings. And uh, for that reason, I just I, I feel very lukewarm about them. I don't hate them. I think they're fine movies, uh, but I just I don't love them. I, there's no there's no great desire. I've only seen all of them once. I have no desire to watch any of them again. So that's my feeling. Alex. Well, I would probably give this movie a three, although I still have hopes for the extended version because like the I don't know if this is a spoiler, but I felt like it was kind of missing an epilogue um, to this movie. Yeah. And um, we'll talk about that later, I guess. Um, And the whole trilogy, I guess I would give a three as well. I really loved the first movie and then I really hated the second one and the third one is kind of in between. So I guess the three. That's interesting. So it looks like we, most of us are, are, or pretty much all of us are on the same page because I kind of rate the movie the same way as you guys do. It's, it's okay, but it's nice to be, it's nice that the movie takes us back to the world. Uh, but it feels like the the best parts we liked about the movie was it's, uh, it's it's odd, right? I mean, none of us feel like completely satisfied with it. Some we feel like something's missing, or or it's just packed too much. I don't think I I don't think I want to use the word that it's missing something because the movie has like tons of stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like be- there's there's a lot of useless stuff, and there's also yeah. a lot of important stuff that's missing. Yeah, yeah. it's so lukewarm. It is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think they oh, oh, major beats of the story throughout the three films, right? I mean, they they did all the major stuff it's just that they changed it around uh, a bit to make their narrative work and then they added some stuff from the appendices of the return of the king with the necromancer and you know they um, added a whole bunch of stuff with legolas and toriel that i do not care about one bit legolas i can kind of legolas i can kind of understand though because Mm -hmm. like that's that's where he lives right he's the son of the wood elf king i mean it was never uh, that big, that big of a deal because I know that you know most of the stuff from the book is actually in these films. It's just that there's a lot of stuff around it that's not from the book. Yeah, it's in it's in a way opposite, right? In Lord of the Rings, they cut a lot of stuff in the books. I mean, I haven't read the book, so I'll, I'll take my thing with a grain of salt. But the movie felt mysterious. I want to know more about this world. This movie is, I'm like, ah, please, I'm done. I'm stuffed. Please let me leave. Let the it's, let some let the eagles come. <laughs> Save do you, me. <laughs> yeah, do, do you want to see more uh, weird love scenes, romance scenes? And then you just see the, p- the picture, bitch, please. <laughs> really? Uh, I, well, you know, to, to me, it's 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 like they, they had to split the movie into, into three because at first they wanted to do it in two films. And then at some point, like six months before the first film came out, they said, well, we're going to make it a trilogy. Uh, I mean, yeah. Not sure how they would make how they would make it at that point, but yeah, and 
then it you have to basically create a three act structure for the films each time and the book is not structured that way so it's much harder to make it work if you have it in three parts i mean you can i could see this being split into two this is much you know mm. there's a point where you can i mean and that's what mm-hmm. Guillermo del Toro also said there's a point where you can actually split the the, the book into into a neat first film and to and then continue on for the second half but yeah if you put, put it into three films basically the book material has to be spaced out to make sure that it's still uh you know uh that, that there's still enough book material for for one of the films um and yeah so they mm. the, the only thing that they had left basically for this one was the battle and yeah then that's not that's not that's probably not enough in itself to justify having a whole movie around it so they they had to sort of invent invent stuff and uh change things yeah after mm. i left the theaters right i mean i was like oh my god somebody needs to edit this down to something watchable or something like that because i felt the same way i'm not going to come back and watch this at the theaters uh, uh like and, and and not something i would watch yearly like i do a lot of the ranks uh and then we did get it somebody did go and did the tolkien version of it uh the four hour version of it and i'd seen it and it really comes off as a dry movie i mean because he was trying to be so close to it uh stuff like toriel arc the necromancer arc were all cut out from it and you got the book version of it it felt very dry so i kind of yeah. feel like peter jackson might have done the right thing i think he might have seen this material and felt like this needs more i need to punch it up a bit but i think he just went too far in that direction maybe because some of the well, stuff that he, do- that he does is a bit goofy right it's a bit um it feels the tone is not is is not very consistent. Right, the sense. tone that's exactly Because right. Yeah. To me, it's like there there are moments where the where the action becomes over too much over the top. Basically, it's it's like you. I mean, then you can say, well, it's like watching a children's cartoon at some points, right? But um, I I I'd, I'd say for uh, I give an example from the second film. If we don't want to go into into spoiler nitty gritty, yeah, of yeah, in the second film you have the barrel. Uh, sequence in the in the water. Mm. At some point, like Bombo, he come he go, gets out of the water in his barrel, rolls around, and then starts killing orcs like while still in his barrel and stuff like and you know uh, Legolas kills like six orcs at once and stuff like that. Which you know the the Lord of the Rings trilogy never did that sort of cartoony. Well, in a way, but, like the thing well, that kind of is most was... similar is. Uh, there like was like a out- skateboarding down uh, the Stairs. elephant. That's, yeah. like, elephant. Yeah. that's like two I seconds of, of screen time. Here it's like <laughs> you have a whole six minute sequence of this stuff happening, which is not, and I mean, him. that sticks with you much more. I mean, I would have to yeah. remember really hard to see which which moments were that goofy in The Lord of the Rings. But then The Lord of the Rings oh. is a much more uh, serious book than the than The Hobbit anyway. So maybe that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get it kid friendly, you know, but at the same time it, it just ended up not feeling uh well meshed together. Like the tone yeah. clashes at points. That's my big gripe is that the, there's such a degree of dissonance and and seemingly like lack of commitment in what Peter Jackson wanted to do with this because mm-hmm. like you say there's like these really silly scenes which w- would have worked fine if that had been what the movie was. But it, it it oscillates so frequently between that and the heavy gratuitous action and the the high like tension of the of their original trilogy that like it, it just it's so confusing and it's so hard to figure out what the movie is and and it's kind of like the same thing with like that comparison you were making Patrick to the prequels of Star Wars is that it, it's trying to be too many things like uh, silly goofy with like Jar Jar Binks and. Uh, very serious political and, and and neither ends up being remotely interesting or and romance interesting. don't forget the stupid romance yeah, and romance too yeah. so <laughs> i don't think that they, i mean i still i still think these are far better than the prequels though if you compare oh, yeah, yeah 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 let's get that clear nobody yeah, just, is saying <laughs> this is <laughs> as bad as phantom is right i think the comparison is being made George too Lucas easily did with the prequels i think in my in my opinion and the, and the thing is i can see that the guy uh, is passionate about this material because he pays homage to you know i i didn't remember like the wereworms and then yeah well there they are and so um yeah they are part of the material but you wouldn't think of you wouldn't think about it <laughs> and i mean he, he he in in all the interviews he does basic i mean the fact that he got everything from the book into the films despite adding lots of stuff um and when he tried to have it connect to the original trilogy and then when it uh you know 
and try in in trying to to uh, get the ending to uh, go at, to a place that that flows well with the original trilogy. I think he really cares about you know the material. Uh, it's just that probably he's too passionate about this stuff. I think, um, and there's maybe a sense also. Yeah, we've done this stuff already. So we are we we are not probably not going to fail with this. So there's much less of there's not there's much less pressure on him to succeed here because he's already uh, been in this world before. So I guess then you know both of these things don't 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 add you know they they're not uh, advantages. I think um, he he wants to keep everything in you know and and he doesn't know when to say stop. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, that's that. That's my problem, essentially. That he that this movie, as it should have been, two movies, would have been maybe fine because he wouldn't have needed to put so much of all the 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 fan pleasers in, and 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 not only that, when he puts fan pleasers in, it's to substitute a a scene in the book that gives the Hobbit the book the Hobbit a feeling. Of you being both both a children's book, but also sometimes pretty scary for a for a tr- children's book that is, and he he does he completely uh, misses the point for me. He misses what the Hobbit is is all about. It's about these light hearted moments, and then these really you know you know you feel like claustrophobic, like when. I don't, yeah, we can't. I can't go too much into it, but it feels like it's it's he misses the point. It's either action or more action for him. All the all the scenes are either okay, romance and action, and then more action. That's more or less how it is for me. At no, least. The Bilbo Thorin scenes are basically they they're pretty pretty well done in my opinion. Usually, um, when Bilbo interacts with the dwarves, generally, I think. Uh, the, the the problem is when you stretch this material out through through three films, what happens is the main character doesn't have as much to do actually, because in the end, yeah, he he does everything he does in the books, but because it's spaced out into three films, it doesn't feel as significant as it would otherwise, I guess. Um, and that, then that means that you you don't get as much, uh, you, you don't notice it, you don't notice it as much, and yeah, I I just feel like Martin Freeman. Uh, and Richard Armitage, they are very good actors and they portray the characters, in my opinion, very well. Uh, they, they, they hit the, the main character arcs that are, that are in the books. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, the, 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 it's just so, so far apart, like the, the, the scenes that are actually from the books that it, it doesn't feel like it's flowing well. So, um, it's, but I, I, I think there are moments like quiet, quiet moments, um, that 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 feel well done. I mean, I, I would say like the scene with with Smaug in the second film uh, is actually you know that's actually pretty much word for word from the book, and it feels like a scene from the book, and that's generally not an action scene. It's just you know two two people talking. Ah, uh, well, you do forget that there's actually a lot of action in that scene. That also, he's kind of yeah, like running run, running from him and everything in in the books. I would say that it's not nearly as much action action and yeah okay they did that better than most scenes but it's still not the scene from the books so i don't know i don't think it has to be the scene uh, from the books though i think what made those scenes so good like that scene and the other big one for me is the scene with um with uh Gollum in the cave uh is that it was just a great uh bilbo moment and there's so few of those and that's i think one of the criminally underused characters obviously he's the main character and he barely gets used and those scenes are always the best when he gets some one-on-one with an interesting sort of um actor to play against him and i think that uh if we had more of that kind of stuff even if it wasn't from the books or if it was some kind of adaption that would have been all to the good um has anyone hey. watched the fan edit at all because apparently that's supposed to be better in that one right uh, I, okay so joining us now on the call is tanya <laughs> oh yeah hi <laughs> Uh, do, do you want to quickly give us your uh, lemon cake rating or Arkham Stone rating for the movies and the trilogy? Ah, uh, there's only one Arkham Stone. So. <laughs> <laughs> just, give it, just, just give it one. That's all we need. Yeah. So, 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 so it's a binary Z- zero. Okay, let's do. I, I, uh, uh, let's split it up into five parts. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I just really didn't like any of it, and not just so. I'm I'm a bit of a book purist, but it's not even just because of that. I think the last movie was just a pretty bad movie overall in terms of narrative and like the structure just didn't make any sense, and I just didn't like it. And it, and there were so many random things in there that <laughs> just didn't make any sense and that I hated. And I think even if I wasn't a book purist, I still wouldn't like it. And then it loses like ten fifths of an Arkenstone yeah. for not yeah. being right. close to the book. How, how much does the guy? So it's how like mu- minus five Arkenstones. How much does the guy? Oh, we're gonna have a good discussion then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To answer your question, I did see the fan edit, but I did feel like it was too. You know, it just felt too dry for me. I mean, there were a few, right, okay. so many of the action scenes, right, are these extra stuff that um, uh, Peter Jackson has put in. And without them, it would have been a shorter movie, but it would have been a lot less, you know, action adventure movie. Entertaining. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, I, yeah, it felt like that. Especially the orcs didn't have any character in it, uh, in it at all. And orcs don't have character in the book, right? I mean, it's just a bunch of orcs chasing them, right? So yeah, just orcs, basically. They're, they're, they're no named orcs. I mean, we they're know no name orcs. Yeah. I mean, like at the end, like oh well, he's yeah. bald. Um, so, but at the same time, you don't know who that is at this point. Um, yeah. Get the great goblin. Yeah, it's, yeah, they got him. That's that's the other one. But they oh, they, I mean, uh, they gave him a character in the film. The, he was, I mean, yeah. He was like, yeah, they did. Yeah, that was to me. That, that's always one of the funniest scenes in the films. But yeah, overall, to me, uh, the quieter moments are much more interesting. Um, where where there's not much action happening actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, to me, I don't have to see the film uh, mimic the book on a one to one basis. Uh, to me. If you if the general essence of the book is intact, then you know if you're leaving out something that that can be left out, or if you're adding something that's not in there but still contributes to it, I'm fine with it. Um, but yeah, I it to, because otherwise you end up with Harry Potter's one and two, which people generally don't consider to be the best ones because they don't you know they don't go beyond the source material. They're just content with uh, giving you a one to one presentation of it, a one to one adaptation. Um, but I can see where at some point it doesn't it, it it doesn't translate the the book well to the screen. So yeah, um, I think what yeah. it boils down to for me is is it a good enjoyable movie to watch? And it's not like compared to Lord of the Rings or, or any of these given Hobbit movies. I just don't for me I don't find them nearly as enjoyable. And, uh, yeah. and it wouldn't matter like how much they adapt as long as it's interesting and it works and it engages me. But it, a gratuitous action doesn't engage me. Uh, and neither does really boring scenes in Lake Town and whatnot. Like, it's just that it, none yeah. of it yeah. works. Some things that were interesting to watch, like the the new revamped um, uh, Nazgul were really cool. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and some other things like Alfred taking up like 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was completely oh, useless. Felt- I don't want to watch him. I kept hoping for his storyline to go somewhere and for him to actually do something in the movie. But Spoilers. He just, he just didn't <laughs> do anything. He did nothing. That's nothing to spoil. It's just... Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's like Decided my main, that's alert. My main Alfred does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, but, that was my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like they, they, they spent so much screen time that they invested in this and then they didn't get anything out of it. As a book purist, I would not have been happy with his edition in any circumstances. But I feel like from just the perspective of whether the movie was a good movie, regardless of how it, how closely it follows the books, it's just such a waste of time that they added his storyline that didn't go anywhere, didn't have any point, didn't have any sort of conclusion, didn't... Like it did not add anything to the narrative, and that's just a waste of screen time. Mm-hmm. He, did, he didn't have an arc mm-hmm. or anything. It was like he was a dick at the start, and he was a dick in the dress at the end, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he was gone. That's it. <laughs> um, the main thing for me that that just drove me nuts was the CGI. Like especially on the second time watching it, I didn't really mind all the Toriel stuff or the Legolas stuff, but Jesus. I mean, Legolas, Legolas looked like a, a video game character, the like a bad. There Even was when he was no, fighting. Yeah, like there's he was jerky. His face was creepy. And if he's aged that much in 10 years, then they should have gotten somebody else. You know what, right? Um, and that time I was thinking, that's not movie. mine, yes. Legolas. <laughs> it was, it would, it kind of, it, it kind of, I, mean, I don't think it will ruin his character in Lord of the Rings for me because he was 
you know, perfect for that. But it just now it just makes it kind of sad. Felt like, like he, Gimli, he needed Gimli to balance him off. And this movie, he had not nobody like that to kind of, you know, bring him down to earth or ground him. Yeah, he he was just supposed to Literally. be some glorious, beautiful thing. And he was just creepy and kind of silly. So I thought that was a shame. So doesn't that describe all elves, basically? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know. No, I this. thought Lee Pace elf was awesome. I thought he was great. Uh, I loved wait, him. Wait, what? Trandil was good? I Tr- thought he was fabulous. Tr- His hair wow. was beautiful. The party right, elf. He, and he and he his eyebrows. Like that. Right, yeah. <laughs> and his elk. Mm. But I, the elk was um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was much more nuanced than Guardians of the Galaxy, so I was like, eh, what else? Uh, let's spend a minute of silence for the great elf that died. Not elf, sorry, elk. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's uh-huh. spare a minute for the elk that died in the movie. All the elks oh. that died in the movie. Yeah. All it's the mountain so goats that died in the movie. Oh, Definitely not the, the elves, though. Not the, <laughs> the, not the elves. <laughs> All the barrels. <laughs> All the barrels. Yeah. All the dragon? Mm. No. Oh. <laughs> Did anybody watch it in uh, high frame rate? High frame rate? I th- I watched it in IMAX, but I'm not sure that was yep. a high frame rate version. Uh okay. Because I my my last comment will be that with a high frame rate 3D, it kind of looks like a documentary. It's, it looks cheap, sorta in a way. I I don't like it. I I think it's it's more like you need to have a lower thra- flame uh, frame but, rate to to make it cinematic looking at least. Yeah, this is kind of. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, the only thing is, um, in our minds, right, when we see that high frame rate, that kind of thing, we think soap opera and not a movie. Is it something yeah. that we'll just get used to over time? Because I think I did not mind it. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't, but I didn't mind it either. But, um, the thing with high frame rate, um, it's given you too much information than what you're used to. When, with 24 frames a second, you, you, you sort of make, your mind's sort of making up the difference. So... Mm. When, when you can see, like, plastic face, legless, defying laws of physics. Uh, um, yeah, I, I guess you can get away with bad makeup, you can get away with bad sets when you're at lower frame rates, but with high frame rates, you need to be up to the task, right? I saw, yeah, the, second one, I saw the second one in the high frame rate, and the first one, I think, and a lot of times it just kind of took me out of it, but, it, but there were a couple times, especially like the scenes over Lake Town that where it actually kind of made it almost look like a play like it was so realistic it did kind of give me that feeling like oh i'm kind of there a little bit i i I just think 3d is a gimmick uh and (laughs) yeah just to jack up the the ticket prices in general um because yeah what does it i mean to me it 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 adds nothing i i generally refuse to watch i usually i usually (laughs) want to watch 3d films in 3d because um, it doesn't enhance the performance. It doesn't enhance um, the the music. It doesn't. To me, it doesn't do anything. So I I I only watch them in regular 2D. It depends on how they use it, and I and I personally think it's a it's not exactly as much of a difference, but but it's oh. a little bit like watching movies in black and white or in color. It's just it just adds another layer to it, and mm. and you you can watch movies in black and white, and there's perfectly good movies in black and white, <laughs> but um but if but but in general, I personally enjoy color movies more. And if 3D is used nicely, then I prefer it. It just depends on what they do with it. But it, I I prefer 3D. Maybe it's not worth the extra money because it's quite a huge <laughs> difference in price in some places. But it it, me, it is it is a bit nicer. To I me, think. it depends on the movie. Like I really like 3D in Avatar, but Avatar was kind of like created to do 3D, so they like thought it out really well. But movies where they just use the 3D to do nothing. Most of the time, it seems like nothing's going on with the 3D. Mm. But even Avatar, so I never really understood it. Even Avatar, the 3D was masking essentially what was a pretty standard story. It's like people were raving about 3D, um, and they didn't notice that the script was sort of like Smurfs plus Pocahontas plus dancing of wolf, dancing with wolves and stuff like that in space. Um, so yeah, but I enjoyed me, it. So I'm okay with that. You know, it's a spectacle. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's what it is, but it, yeah, it's it it was you know sort of like because it it used 3D, people were saying like this is the most awesome film ever, and then after after a couple of weeks, people were probably not not as as uh, enthusiastic about it anymore. So it's it's to me it's it's just sort of a distraction from the quality of the film. 
Yeah, it's 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 just that you know, as an engineer, I'm always up for more experimentation and things like that. And and I think movie studios and theaters, I mean, theaters are having a hard time. I think getting people to come to theaters to watch. It's just that you know, between streamings and things like that, and our TVs at home getting better and all that, theaters aren't the only way to get your that immersive experience. And yeah, so it's kind of I I can see why they are doing all of this. They wanna they wanna find and keep the technology up but probably this is not it we need something more uh i'm sorry vic for making fun of your pronunciation of theater i just thought it was <laughs> you're a horrible person fun. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh you're saying like taters let's <laughs> sound it reminded me of you know taters theaters theaters what taters precious Dear listeners, that's it for the spoiler-free part of the podcast. We're going to take a break and indulge ourselves in a spoiler-filled deep dive discussion of the trilogy. Stick around if you don't mind the spoilers. Uh, so this is the spoiler fill part of the discussion everything from the books movies and the trilogy will be spoiled and up for discussion in this part so guys so, so let's get started what do you guys in general think about the necromancer arc it was oh good. my god <laughs> it in the first movie but then it kind of got crazy mm-hmm. i think i'm gonna say this a lot about most of the added storylines cool but unnecessary it, it it wasn't even it was cool in the first movie and in the session second movie when we saw the infinite eye of Sauron and we heard yeah. uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's voice of him you know it felt like really epic but then the way it ended with Galadriel just flashing a flask at him you know just felt <laughs> uh, that's Sauron you know he's a he's a Vela not a Vela sorry he's a Meyer Meyer. He's a Maya, sorry. <laughs> Don't get me. But they just kind of the Maya. Narrator. You can't just make him run away like that. I was just okay, like I was okay with that. Kind of felt like Dora the Explorer saying, "Swiper, no swiping." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that especially this is situation, you know, Sauron isn't in a diminished form, and and Galadriel is the most powerful being on, in Middle Earth, so. Well, I, I mean, think it's the, just that Sor- Soromon was there, you know, if anybody did anything magical, no, not magical, I mean, or epic, it would have been him, right? No, it's no, a, and Galadriel no, yeah, is more, is more powerful than... Yeah. Well, I mean, in the book, it <laughs> says that by the devices of of Saruman was he forced out, but I'm okay with what they did. I just don't like how they showed it. Like, I don't... Why did she turn into, like, a sea monster or whatever the hell they were trying to do there? Because <laughs> fellowship scene. Uh, yeah, that yeah, looked that's... exactly like that, yeah. But why does she have yeah. to be evil to drive out evil? Like, why couldn't it just be a bright white light? No, she wasn't I, f- I felt like, like in general... I felt in general they were trying way too hard, not just with this scene, to, yeah. to, to strike any sort of connections to the Lord of the Rings. And it's nice to have those, but if they are just forced, then it just doesn't make any sense. And overall, with that story arc, I felt like they... They thought they'd put that in there, and they thought, hey, it would be really cool if we had the necromancer in there. And then they had that storyline, and then they didn't know where to take it and how to conclude it. And then they were just yeah. like, oh, let's just flash some light at him, and then he'll go away. This is a great idea. And it's, it's, yeah, it's not. Yeah, I really it's liked, totally. I really liked that scene. I thought it was exciting and cool. But if I was someone who'd never seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I would be like, well, what was even the point of having that whole arc in there? It just did no, nothing for the story. Yeah. Especially Radagas comes yeah. out like like a very I mean I mean I I thought Radagas was supposed to be more epic than this right No well, he's, he's not, not even in the book epic. No he's yeah, not like, very epic yeah. in the books He doesn't he's, he doesn't exist in the book so you don't he really, really show up so Radagas exists yeah. in the book He's, he's name drop Well like he like, like he exists but he's not like he doesn't appear so. Like, I mean, yeah, Radagas but, for me yeah. before this was like, okay, somebody that's equal to Gandalf or something. Maybe not as good, but slightly, a- almost as good as Gandalf. But this movie right. has completely ruined him for me. When I look at Radagas now, all I can think is of guy with shit on his head or something. I think that when, when Gandalf name dropped him in, in, in the books, it was more uh, out of like he was being nice to say that they're 
at the same level as him because both Radag- Radagast is like he he and and the two blue wizards right are are all like completely disassociated with what's re- with reality and, and a- that makes him completely not like yeah they they're not like uh, Sar- Saruman or uh, Gandalf at all. <laughs> He's like, we came over together, but those fuckers were rowing the boat. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Those, those guys are still in wizard school. We are, we are graduates. Also, Gandalf does nothing in this film. <laughs> basically nothing. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's so he does, sad. Yeah. He basically he's my favorite fight. actor ever, and he's just not cool at all. Well, he's a little bit cool, But he's still guess, cool as like, Gandalf. It's just yeah. that he doesn't do much. Yeah, um, he tries, but nobody good. listens to him. He's to be like, fair... <laughs> He's the main reason I went to see the movie at all, and then he's not epic. Yeah, yeah I mean, he complained also, like the actor complained that he had just he was basically acting against the green screen the whole time, and that he, it wasn't yeah. like acting anymore. So yeah, I, I can understand why you know um, that is, and also like, but um, Viggo Mortensen has also recently come out and said, well, Lord of the Rings, you know, it's it's not as good as as everyone probably remembers it. To be, um, because he said, "Well, there's a ton of CG in it. It doesn't, you know, it's not really that that good." Basically, was what he was saying. And then people got into an, an opera, and they said, "Well, you know," uh, he sort of walked back that comment a bit. But at the same time, it's like I can understand how some of these actors who've been working on this material for so long, at some point, you get tired doing this stuff. So, um, yeah, probably me, Ian McKellen was a bit glad that he didn't have that much to do now. <laughs> The only uh, merits I kind of see of the Necromancer arc is it kind of fleshed out the orc stuff a bit more, you know. It kind of gave us what Azog up to or that he was being directed by Sauron to take back Erebor so they'll have a beachhead or something when they launch their attack on Gondor or something like that, <laughs> right? Uh, so Azog ar- around anyway. Like you could have, I mean, the way I imagined it would go was... Because in the in the book, Beyond beheads an orc and the, and kills a wag when they're staying at his place. So I thought, yeah, this would be a good idea to uh, you know get rid of Ad of Adzok and make Volk the villain of the last of the last two films, basically. Because then you can give him a, a proper motivation, like when he wants to get revenge for his dad or something. Mm. That would have been actually really. I mean, that would have been something. And instead, That's he's true. just an asshole. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, they use him to give Legolas something to do. Yeah, yeah but own... that's so that's not as uh, that's not as nuanced as as do as giving him a proper motivation. Yeah, yeah but they all like awesome... really need something to do. That's yeah, another yeah. question. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, they they could have just not had him in the movie, then they wouldn't have gone out of their way to make up random yeah. shit so he has something to do. <laughs> that would but they thought, wanted. Yeah. They, I think they wanted to have something else than faceless orcs that people don't. Uh, I mean, don't identify with. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> Well, I don't know. But the, I, 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 to get back to the Necromancer thing, uh, I think you know the fact that Galadriel sort of casts him out. I think this is in line with what happens uh, in the in the appendices and the extended material. Where basically, the, it just says the White Council like drove the you know the Necromancer away, and basically Galadriel in the book uh, uh, at the end of the Return of the King, basically she tears down Dol Guldur, you know, um, a lightly but, held Dol Guldur. Yeah, anyway, yeah, she, hey, she um, basically, yeah, she basically, you know, destroys it. I don't know if she does it. I mean, she doesn't do it by do it by herself, but it's like I, I remember that she she is sort of said that she uh, opens all the you know uh, all the cells and you know the prisoners in there uh, come out again and stuff like that. So yeah, this is, I mean, to me, this is uh, it's it's still what happens in the extended material. It's just that we never get to see it in detail. So I mean. It's gonna it's it's gotta be a, an anticlimax in any case because you know Sauron is not really defeated he just goes away so mm, yeah quick thing for me like I liked the Middle Earth Avengers scene I thought it was a fun scene but yeah I pretty much agree with everyone that it just ended like without any meaning and it felt on the whole not important I didn't dislike it but, uh, yeah, and then cool. Saruman says well leave him to me exactly it's like a huge plot hole like. They know about it's Sauron, but they're not doing anything like, about it. It's, it's sort of meant to say that he's already corrupted by this <laughs> one. Probably. That's a plot like hole. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Really, that really annoyed <laughs> me. That really annoyed me as well. Hmm? It really annoyed me that it seemed like Saruman was corrupted at that point because I don't think he is in the books and I don't think he should be. And it annoys me that they kind of imply he's, that, I guess. 
Yeah, because he's, he's not telling corrupted. them not to go after. He's like, oh, I'll take care of him when. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not clear. I guess if you if you didn't know what happened later, if you didn't have if you hadn't watched the Lord of the Rings or read the books, then I may I don't know if you'd pick up on it. But it does still seem a little bit sketchy, and I just I just wish. But like, if if you know what happens, like it doesn't seem genuine, and if and and I think it should be. I think at this point he he should still be on the right side. I mean, there's an exact like another it. scene right where Tandril uh, uh, Tandril uh, tells uh, Legolas, "Hey, there's a Junadine in the north. Go help him out or go seek oh him God, out." It was also like, "What the fuck?" Oh, let's not talk about is, that. Like five or ten. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I think if you didn't watch the if you didn't watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, and you you heard Saruman say, "Well, I'm going to take care of this guy." Fine. You what? You then go on to watch the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy in the first film. You probably sort of still think, "Oh yeah, I remember this guy. He was supposed to take care of the necromancer, or, you know, Sauron or whatever." Um, and when he doesn't, then you say, you, "Then you're probably much more surprised that he betrays them." But yeah, it's it doesn't. It doesn't ultimately add that much, I guess. Um, uh, to me, quick, it's just like to keep it in line with what we know already. Um, quick question. Uh, so if somebody comes to you who hasn't watched The Lord of the Rings or any of the movies yet, and would you say, hey, watch The Hobbit first and then go watch The Lord of the Rings? Or would no. you say, just go watch The Lord of the Rings? I would say read the books and do not watch either. Of the movies. Come oh, on. Yeah. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah, watch The wow. Lord of the Rings trilogy? I have to disagree with that. <laughs> okay, no, let, but read the books first. You can you can watch you can watch both if you absolutely have to, but just read the books first. Yeah, I, I would say skip skip the Hobbit trilogy and just read the book instead, and then maybe watch the movies. And because if you like the movies, the Lord of the Rings movies, you can because it's a pretty large trilogy, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, <laughs> uh, but in book wise, uh, so. Yeah, uh, uh, most people, if they came up to me and said, uh, "So uh, I, I haven't read this or seen this, and I'm, I'm not," I'm, if they haven't done that already, then they're not really into fantasy. Well, to in me, general. it kind of depends on their or age. Maybe they just don't know about it. They maybe they just don't know about. They, they just, what, they, they they maybe don't, maybe they're like six or something. Or seven, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It depends well, on their then age. It, <laughs> well, it, it, then then my advice still stands. Uh, get the first book, the the Hobbit. Get that read through, then uh, watch the the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Read books, oh, kids. Oh, read the books. Uh, <laughs> the books. You should always no, no. Should read play, play Shadow of Mordor the game first, and then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually think it'd be easier to get like a ten to twelve year old to watch the Hobbit movies than it would be to get them to watch the Lord of the Rings movies. Absolutely not. No. No. <laughs> I watched some fun. Lord of the Rings was lots of fun. I think I also there's think pop was much much more difficult to follow because it's just so incoherent. Yeah, so I and I, I can give like personal example of this. I watched all these movies with my little brother, and he's like he's ten, and uh, he enjoys Lord of the Rings way more. Um, he thought yeah. these movies were really boring. So the thing is, maybe make... for kids, it's a very abstract concept, right? Because they're fighting for all the good in the world, while in this movie they're fighting for a bunch of gold. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then there's also all that other stuff going on, and I think that just complicates things. And I kind of like I know what happens in the books, and I also know know what's supposed to happen in between and stuff but i had trouble following the movies because there's just no coherent narrative and i just found them difficult to follow yeah I, that's think, why I don't uh, understand them i don't know but it's yeah, just I, it's, I don't know i find them difficult to watch yeah i think one of the big flaws about this and, and i think it's probably in the source material is is probably the 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 gold it's right the awesome. ultimate end of the goal is a bunch of gold although um, yeah. Gandalf wants it wants to set up a dwarf kingdom in Erebor again so they can act, act as a border but at the end of the day we were fighting for a bunch of gold and jewelry so uh, no matter how much movie, you do the source material is a, is a very is a very narrow is a very you know uh, no, in fact, it's the book the book and the movie make the point that basically fighting just for, for, for the gold wasn't the right idea that you know mm. basically when when th- uh, we were in the spoiler section, so I can just say. Yes, when, yes. When, now we are spoilers. When Thorin, dies, when Thorin dies, and you know, he tells Bilbo, like, you know, you know, there's there's something more to life than just gold and jewels and all that stuff. I mean, in the book, that's. I mean, I I think I read somewhere that Tolkien described Smaug basically as a rich person who has so much more than they actually need, 
um, that, I mean, they will react violently if you even take a single thing because they just, they, they don't want to share it with anyone. Um, hmm. And then that, that's basically what it boils down to. Like, this is an allegory, basically. It's, it's yeah. you know, uh, making uh, a statement about uh, how much value do you place on, on material things, basically, uh, in the face of something like Bilbo. When Bilbo, Bilbo constantly thinks in the book that he wants to go home, that's that's something, you know, that that's, has more value in the eyes of the author than uh, mm. everything else. So, and I think the films basically try to make that point, too. Although they make it very hastily at the end of the, I mean, they they sort of show all the uh, dragon sickness stuff, um, and I I think the the, the sequence where, where Thorin basically like is having this vision where he's sort of engulfed in gold and all that stuff, I thought that was actually pretty pretty neat, like visually, like uh, showing him wrestling with his uh, madness at that point. But uh, other than that, I I don't think um, it's. You know, there, there are people who haven't read the books and who at the end of the third film said, well, this is pretty much, I mean, this is taking three films to make a pretty simple point. And that's true uh, because the book is a very small book. It's just mm-hmm. 300 pages long. Yeah. yeah. But Mathieu, do you think that, uh, do you think, could we call Smaug a one percenter then? Do you think we can call him that? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Easily. It's like the- <laughs> It's one percent, one percent, or one percent. Uh, yeah, most one percent, one percent that there is. Um, yeah. The thing is, to me is, I mean, um, I, I, but I, I know, like, for at least with the character of Thorin, they, they sort of had the arc. Like, the character in the book is also like the guy who has the most notable change, um, because Bilbo basically stays uh, the same. I mean, he, he throughout. I mean, he, be- he becomes braver by the end. Uh, and more daring, but at the same time, he's not—he's not fundamentally changed. Like you know, getting from good nature to to greedy, you know, like. Dragonvale like, so- also slightly changes, right? Like now he starts caring about his folk more than because he sees all the people dying, all his mm-hmm. kinmen kinsmen dying. He also kind of like, okay, let's just go back to our thing. Yeah, no, but to me, it's like to, uh, it's it's they they saw the I mean because people say well these films are not really about Bilbo because Bilbo is like sidelined compared to the other character who is Thorin because Thorin has a very clear arc you know he he is a douche then he becomes sort of likable uh, less of a douche and by the end he, he, just before the end he becomes a super douche and then he gets less douchey. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a saga that, of. <laughs> that was he's, another huge he's also part. really attractive in those movies. Yeah. That was yeah, that was one that was, one, that was one major bonus in the movies that he was oh, a very yeah. hot guy. That was a big part of that was a big part of of my enjoyment of these movies. <laughs> so, do you do you enjoy dwarves, Alex? Is it um, at least that? Thorin. Thorin oh, okay. was very hot. Come on, Keely. Well, all. spoiler, Keely. yeah, all the cute ones are dead. <laughs> yeah. The hot ones died in this battle. Um, but I don't, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that actually was a serious thing, but there was that. There were those people going around. Like I'm. I'm in a couple of Facebook groups of Tolkien societies and stuff because I'm in a couple of Tolkien Nerd. societies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna hang out. Nah. Um and um. And and there were people posting the like the, that started more than a year ago, and they were like trying to start a, peti- a petition to Peter Jackson to ask him not to kill Thorin in the movies. I, I don't know if they were serious right. about that or if it was a joke, but uh, there were lots show. of posts right. about that. Does anybody know what happened to the Kingdom of Erebor? Because all the nobility is dead, right? Thorin's dead, Feely's dead, Killy's dead. Well, so what happens uh, Billy, is that Billy Connolly becomes king. Becomes the king. But that's not shown <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> Oh, can I just say that Zane is the most awesome character I've ever seen in any movie? I think he's terrible. I hated him so much. (laughs) And I love him. Oh my god, he's the most awesome character. I love Billy Connolly. And if we could have seen Billy Connolly, I think it would have been amazing. But his... All you got was his voice and then this terrible CGI. Like, Yeah. He's just headbutting everything. If he'd have looked like... Yeah, did he have... Like some sort of metal in his mohawk that he could just <laughs> pop people on the head and they would just fall. Yes. Like I actually, when I made notes when I saw it the first night, I wrote down about him that he was like Jar Jar Binks. Like he was clearly just Crappy. comic relief. Comic <laughs> relief. Like 
he was well, yeah, he was purely there just to be entertaining and to have silly lines. But he just didn't like most things in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, but it just seemed like he should have been more. And I was yeah. disappointed. The mad Scottish cousin in Blackadder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Macada. <laughs> Macada. Yes. Yeah, Macada, yeah. So uh, tell me if this is wrong. I'm reading it from uh, the Robert Foster's thing. It says uh, after Smog was destroyed and then the five Battle of Five Armies was done, uh, Dane the Second reestablished the kingdom under the mountain, and its halls were once again uh, fair and its people wealthy. And then during the Lord of the Rings, it was sieged by the Easterlings. But then after the fall of Sauron, the uh, the dwarves and the men of Dale were able to relieve the sieges. And in the fourth age, Erebor was an independent kingdom, uh, but it was allied with the and protected by the re- reunited kingdoms. So is that right? All it says is it's happy ever after, happily ever after. Or something. <laughs> it sounds about right. Yeah, yeah that's, but, that's probably what's happened. I mean, I know about yeah. the Eastern stuff. So yeah, yeah. but the, a lot of those the third or the twelve drawers they die in between, right? Yeah, Balin dies, like that we know, <laughs> and Gloin yeah. also, and some of them go to Moria to try to reclaim it, and then they die in the in the mines. So it's yeah, not happy for all of the protagonists here. I mean, I for example, I like uh, Balin in the films. I I think he's a good dwarf. For I mean, he fits the tone of the novels in, mm. in the films yeah. at least. Mm. But um, yeah, I, it's it's just you know they they. Um, I can get past the fact that he doesn't have a blue beard because in the book he does. <laughs> oh yeah, that is so disappointing. That uh, that actually disappoints me. Uh, but me, but I, 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 I can let it slide because you know it's it's like oh, yeah. uh, it would look ridiculous. It's like Dario and Harris and Game exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, we hate that as well, don't we? <laughs> I, I don't hate it. That's I don't different. hate it. I mean, it's like you yeah, know, it's also different. Robert's hair color. Exactly. You go from to something that, that looks like a circus clown. I don't know. It's a bit weird. But a uh, sexy circus clown, though. <laughs> okay. So do we think, go, going back a little bit, do we think if if he had decided not to kill Thorin, as if he had that right to do that, would the would it have made it? I mean, not that I really think it made a great point, anyways. But would it have would it have been fine, or is it? I mean, it kind of felt like he was the Aragorn of this movie, right? Or at least trying. He was supposed to be. I really it's, thought that he was just a douche throughout. Like the first time I saw it, I didn't even understand. You know, I didn't even cry. And, and I usually I cry at everything. I was like, oh, Thorin died. Whatever. He was a dick anyway. <laughs> he so had like three, three redeeming moments. He's a dick who realizes that he's a dick, which makes him less of a dick. <laughs> but um, yeah, to me, it's just he doesn't actually. Um, I mean, he, he the, the character, if you don't kill him, then you undercut the message of the film, basically, because. Right. Unless he's on deathbed, he's not gonna have that heart to heart talk with Bilbo anyway. So um, yeah. I, yeah, that's why I think it's it's probably necessary to keep him dead by the end. So, um, but yeah, to me, I mean, the, 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 it's a much more attractive character to have. I mean, Bil- they, they, I mean, they they were interested enough in Bilbo to cast Martin Freeman um, to portray him, and and they they did enough to to give him sort of the mannerisms that you would expect from from that character. But at the same time, he was never the focus, and and especially at the end of the Hobbit, he basically does one thing, which is to hand over the Arkenstone, and that's it. Um, mm. After that, he gets bunk on the head when the battle starts, and he doesn't see it. So. Um, not that much to do for poor Bilbo. So in the end, you have to give, like, you have to make the the Thorn stuff work. And in this case, I mean, they drive home the point that he's really getting uh, greedy about the treasure. I mean, I know that in the books he's not uh, greedy to the point where he's uh, that he's threatening every one of them uh, in you know in in plain sight, you know. But um, still, it's it's. I mean, it's a bit exaggerated in the film as well, but at, at least they they got that part right. Um, it's just a bit uh, um, most mostly because I would have I would have liked to see him actually 
threaten to throw Bilbo off the walls, right? Because that's why he does in the books. But in the he film, does, it's right? Of- I mean, he was trying to throw him out when it's revealed that it was Bilbo who gave the Arkenstone. But then the other dwarf, uh, you know, uh, hold him back and yeah. let him escape. Yeah. I thought the dragon sickness thing was done very well. Uh, the way it felt with the gold. Kind of just like some kind of heavy thing on him. Uh, very close to how the ring uh, was like, right? Uh, mm. yeah. yeah. Just don't get jewels, people. If you're in this world, you know, <laughs> don't get jewelry. It will, it will hunt you. Oh, I don't know what you mean. Let's invest in the gold standard. <laughs> oh, God. oh. Does anybody else wonder, like, how dragons amass that much gold? Because they don't have fucking pockets. So they're not, like, going places <laughs> and picking it up. Put so it mouth. There's all I can picture, pocket, <laughs> yeah, eating it and shitting out the gold in his little layer. That's the they only way I can picture this. They just Lannister? They just steal it and hoard it. Yeah. So yeah. They can't spend so. it, but in the book, they make the point out of it. They they don't... It's, it's To them, they just want it. They don't need to spend it. They, they, they just want to lie on it. That's all. Yeah, but there was no way the dwarves had that much gold laying around. I mean, their entire throne room was full, so he had to collect more of it, which is kind of right. ridiculous how it's much was a, there. They were pretty busy. They were pretty busy, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is why, you know... The, they wanted to go back in the first place. Like in the in the book, like one fourteenth of of the treasure is you know is enough to basically buy the whole shire or something. I don't know. It's, uh, it's... Yeah, it was nice that we had the mithril scene, right, where uh, yeah. where the Thorin gave Bilbo the mithril armor, and I Why? and I do remember the part somewhere that somebody says the mithril armor was worth as much as the shire, and Bilbo is like. I don't need it. I don't want it. What all is this? <laughs> well, it would have been nice yeah. if he'd given some to Philly and Killy. Yeah, that would. Or been any of the other dwarves. Yeah, or himself. <laughs> but Philly didn't uh, have a character anyway. At one like, point, all the dwarves yeah. are armored up, right? And yeah, then yeah. when they actually charge out, they're wearing yeah, they're their like, traveling oh, clothes, oh, which yeah, is yeah, fucking yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> Well, they got unarmored when he was like, we're not fighting. And then he mustered them real quick. And they're like, should we get our armor? No, we're going to turn the tide of the battle. All Just the 14 of us. <laughs> no. they, they did not ride out on the ramps, right? They just charged. And then later they rode on the ramps. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, actually, I've actually heard people ask, like, who are the five armies? Like, I counted seven. Like, they're all... <laughs> all <laughs> trolls, worms, hobbits, um, and, and, you know, men. And, and the and bats. Everything. Don't forget the war bats. Oh These yeah, the bats, bats are only yeah. the, bats for yeah. one yeah. the bread for one. The bread for war. And then we didn't say the total battle. They said like five hundred times. <sighs> and then they didn't do anything except no. beat yeah. people. Yeah. Except <laughs> carry <laughs> Legolas just... around. It hurts my, my brain. It's hurt. it hurts my brain. Ariel didn't even question that. Like Legolas jumps on this bat, and she just continues her her thing. She's like, <laughs> She's okay, like, Legolas is off. Finally got rid of that fucker. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that guy's crazy. He's Not like the, time, anyway. the redheaded stepchild. Okay, let's uh, rank the battle scenes. Uh, you got the battles of Helm Steve. You got the battle of uh, Gondor. You got this battle. Let's see any other battle. Okay, the battle at the first starting of Black Lord Eight, of the Rings, Black where Sauron gets his fingers chopped off. So you got like four battles. How would you rank them all? No, five. You have the one where uh, they they go to the Black Gate at the end of the. Yeah. Return. Well, oh yeah, okay. Let's include that as well. So, how would you rank them? Uh, Helm, Helm Steep, Helm Steep first. No, That's no, the best. no. Gondor no, 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 Fields is the Helen first. Fields first. Uh, Charge your right here, because that no. was made me cry. It's the best yeah. scene yeah. in That's cinematic true. history. I, I think I, I, I might I, go with Helm Steep as number one. My no, no, I, 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 I can't. No, it to me, has I to put the right of the row here. The worst, the worst thing about Helenor Fields is that this is. This this thing about this also actually in the books that I don't like is the whole, but I am no man and I hate that. That's that's specific. <laughs> that's, that's p- close to the It's book. a loophole. Yeah, I'm I know, but I hate it. Yet. I hate I hate it. It's, it's so cheap, <laughs> and that's the only really thing I I don't like about the books is actually that. You're just that. mad because you couldn't have killed the Witch King. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not as good. Over it. Girl, girl, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even have been on that field. I would. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have been washing your hair. Yeah, uh, washing my yeah. hair once a week and uh, being just. <laughs> Okay, would you be delicious. happy if she said, I'm 50% Neanderthal instead or something like that? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, just like, I just don't like I just don't like the I just don't like the whole loophole thing. That downgrades I've, I've it for me. This. Essentially, I, I, Helm's Deep, 
I I I think that Ellen Palinor feels is number two, but then then the the Black Gates, and because you see so little of of the whole first uh, second age uh, attack mm-hmm. on Sauron, that's that's why it's number four for me. And then of course uh, this battle of five armies because it sucks. Can I just say something about the loophole thing? I think I've said that before on the Lord of the Rings podcast, and that may have been the one where I fell asleep and just said random th- Shakespeare <laughs> things every time I woke up. Um, <laughs> um, but um, but actually, I, um, Tolkien wrote that because um, after reading or seeing or I don't know Macbeth, he did, he didn't like the the loophole with how Macduff can. Kill. Cool. Can I? Are Shakespeare spoilers okay? Okay, go for it. <laughs> it's been around longer than the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I don't know. Um, yeah, like um, so. Basically, Mac- Macduff gets to kill Macbeth because he was not born from a woman, but via C-section. So that's why he can <laughs> kill. Oh um, my that, God, that's, that's so yeah, bad. That's, I mean, that's a bad loophole. <laughs> the yeah, worst one yeah, is the yeah. Moving and, the trees. Yeah, the moving of the trees. But that's also yeah. what Tolkien did. He was like, I want yeah, the trees to move. Took, he took that from the. Yeah, that's how the ants ended up walking to Isengard. Um, so um, yeah. So actually, like his his Eowyn witch king thing is like an, in his opinion anyway an improved version on the Shakespeare C section loophole. Okay. So. I don't know. Yeah, they should I have like had a Mac- lawyer Mac- before well, they wrote like all this stuff. Then it would have been like Homo sapien and all that stuff. All the <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I liked the troll siege equipment. Like they just had the catapults tied oh, to their backs. Oh, that's true. That's true. I thought that, that, that was, was cool. Really good, yeah. And I like yeah, how yeah, they that... just used the, the troll's head as a battering ram to open yeah. the door. <laughs> that and he was just so passed funny. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like that. Like it seemed like the people were all slaughtered like five times over. Yeah. Like. Everybody was just dying left and right, but then at the end, there's like tons of people left, and it just oh, didn't make any sense. Also really oh, a uh, quick question: Don't the trolls uh, don't they turn to stone during the daytime? So what happened here? Was it cloudy that day? Those are different trolls. Bats, bats, yeah. bats in the sky. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was not even <laughs> something. Like <laughs> so, uh, there's mountain trolls and cave trolls, right? Yeah, there's, the only ones that can withstand the light are the Olokai, anyway. Um, that that are basically more intelligent trolls. They're like part man, part troll, or something. Yeah, like that. something. Oh, like you that. no, you mean Orokai? They're not trolls. Oh, Olo- no, 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 the, no, the Olokai are like the troll version of the yeah. Orokai. They're basically oh, okay. improved trolls. They can withstand the sunlight, and they have a. They actually speak the black speech, so you know. Wait, Urukai are trolls and not us? The trolls Urukai. No, no, they're they're Urukai. <laughs> they're they're Urukai, which are super orcs, basically, and then you have Olokai. Ah, who are, uh, oh, super trolls, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, which I mean, they don't get mentioned in uh, as such in the in the Lord of the Rings, but you know from the extended material that they, I mean, they're discussed basically. I mean, you, they, they I, I guess it's just that they they are mixed with with men, so they have they're more intelligent than than average trolls, and they can withstand sunlight. I, no, I wish but, I wish this battle had a battering ram like Gong Grand, right? I wish they if they were oh, they, uh, they yeah. introduced us. Oh, to I didn't Grand really need this. it. <laughs> Grand, yeah. Grand, yeah, it's, Grand. it's basically a ruin that they're attacking. So it's yeah. Not, uh, but what I, one of the things I really disliked about it was when the dwarves go out and put up this amazing shield ball, and then the dumbass elves just go <laughs> jumping over the top of them like uh, fucking retards. Seriously. Use your goddamn arrows, you dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, That's, yeah, for uh, sure that. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting really nasty images about how how Olokai is made. Uh, try uh-huh. to think about that. Cave uh, trolls no. and and humans. Uh, no, well, that that bad bad pictures, bad pictures. Oh, uh, yeah, that, you have to. Uh, <laughs> Sauron hasn't released that. <laughs> <laughs> he has patents on that one. Um, I but, believe they yeah, can only I... say Hodor when they're born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not nice. Uh, so, nice. so pretty much you guys will all rank this particular battle as the last, right? That, is yeah. that what I'm getting? Yeah, but I would I would still rank the Battle of Pelennor first because um, they don't talk about how it is hopeless. Um, they just, you know, they, they, in the Battle of Helm's Deep, the problem is they all say, you know, it is hopeless. Like, they, we're, we're all going to die tonight. And with the Battle of Pelennor, that's not even... I mean, it's not said explicitly. Like, they all... Just you know, it's it, they just act like they are desperate and and uh, 
you know, uh, fleeing for their lives and, you know, nihilistic and all that stuff. You only have Denethor saying at the end, like, you know, just, just abandon your posts and everything. So the actual despair of the situation comes across much more, much more, it's, it's much more nuanced. They don't, they don't have, have it in the dialogue. Hmm. Um, so that's why I would put it at the number one spot because it's a bit subtler. It's a bit more subtle than the, um, Battle of Helm's Deep. The Battle of Helm's Deep has the, you know, has basically the, the charge of the Rohirrim, Rohirrim at the end, which is always awesome. So it's yeah, it's not just awesome. Right. Battle of Helm's Deep is second yeah. for me, and then the battle uh, at the Black Gate at the end of the Return of the King comes third, and then uh, the Battle of uh, the Last Alliance, uh, and uh, obviously Battle of. What I what I found really awesome was the women of Lake Town who at some point just go like, "Oh, men are fighting. Let's go fight." I thought that was really <laughs> yeah. Cool. Except yeah. It's like one of the one of the two <laughs> moments in the movie I actually liked, and the other one was Dane because I think his accent was awesome. Lake Town That's stuff cool. was cool. Like I, besides Alfred, I thought they had an interesting way of fighting. Kind of, it was very improvised, and I thought that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, and Bard was awesome, wasn't he? Awesome. I I like I like Luke Evans as Bard the Bowman. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Cool. Like he had yeah. these really yeah. cool ways of fighting that weren't like. Typical. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he seems like a real yeah. character. At least. I like or when they were all arrayed really up, cool arrayed up in front of the like dwarves, and like all the elves are like pristine and in perfect formation. And then you see the like Lake Town people in the middle are just like a square, yeah. a mishmash of people. <laughs> but you know that for the battles in Return of the King and uh, the Two Towers, they also use a pr- computer program, but there the characters basically all do different stuff. Are you telling me they didn't have a hundred thousand people yeah. in the field somewhere? That's I, 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 I don't think that a hundred thousand people. Like it, <laughs> exactly, I was going to say the same thing. I don't believe There's that they ever used CGI when here. they didn't have to. And, yeah, <laughs> that was a joke. You know, Gollum, Gollum actually is a meth addict that they found. In his... <laughs> but and, yeah, and in circus is just there's just a fun figure. Like let's just say it, like. Tolkien doesn't write a lot of women into his stories. Like, you know, we're going to have a discussion tomorrow uh, about Beren and Luthien, which is one of the rare exceptions to the rule. But otherwise, uh, equality between men and women in these books. Like, the the only example that actually exists in Lord of the Rings is Eowyn. Galadriel not in Lord of the Rings? The most powerful elf? She doesn't show up. I mean, she shows up for a chapter, but she doesn't actually actively do much in the yeah. story itself, right? Yeah, and what uh, frustrated me so much about Eowyn was that she just basically, like, at the end, she just decides that being a shield maiden isn't for her, and then she just marries Faramir and has his babies and retires well, because well, she doesn't want Faramir. to do cool stuff. Yeah, anyway. he's, but at the same time, I could see, I mean, high. he's still, that, yeah, he's that's still doesn't take away <laughs> That's no, but like I, I don't mind Mary. Like I don't mind her marrying him and having his babies, but she doesn't have to stop doing awesome but, stuff. She, so she doesn't rule over the Rohirians then, because she, in a, in a way, she's the oh, the no, heir, she's right? The, of the inten- of the uh, um, steward. No, no, Eowyn of from the steward of Gondor. So it's not yeah, part of the re- so reunited so, kingdoms or anything like that. Uh, Eowyn becomes king of Rohan. Yeah. My in top battle is Pelham or Fields because the ride of the Rohirrim just tops everything else in any movie of all time. Exactly. And that's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they could have had a ride of the Rohirrim if they'd been riding those goats instead of a fucking pig. <laughs> those goats were awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. And in the end, when they started climbing the mountain and everything, right, uh, when uh, Thorin led the charge, not the charge really, because it was only four of them, uh, but it was pretty cool how mountain goats did it. Why did Dane uh, yeah. decide to ride a pig? Is yeah, like, awesome. Did it like a goat bite him when he was a kid and now he's scared of them? What? <laughs> no, because those, those things know. were awesome. <laughs> yeah, I do agree that Dane is is the main main reason why I like him so much is actually because he reminds me of like like a proper dwarf. Like if the one you you usually picture, you picture a dwarf speaking with a sort of Scottish accent and being completely yes. badass and and uh, not. Giving a fuck about who's who's who is who is up against. So basically, think, he's uh, the most like Gimli. Yeah. Essentially, essentially, yeah. But 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 even Gimli didn't speak like in a proper Scottish <laughs> accent. Dine <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the book. I mean, in at least in the extended material, Dine says Agzog at the Battle of uh, Azanrubitsa, right? Shall we move on to the Toriel arc? Does anybody oh, have yeah. comments on that? 
<laughs> nah, okay. I think it's okay. Oh, it's okay, right? It's perfectly yeah. fine. Awesome job all around. <laughs> yeah. I, I, feel free to yell at me on this, but I'm going to say this, but it feels like Peter Jackson wanted to be a very inclusive director, right? He wanted to add women to the story, uh, which had very few or none at all. He wanted to add, uh, you know, other races too. That's why he added some people at Lake Town to be black and Chinese and things like that. Uh, yeah, but it just feels like it's very obvious how he did it. I wish he added, when he added them, he put in... He, they had something more substantial to do instead of having a love triangle. Not that love triangles is not substantial, but it's not substantial. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it took, like, I'm, I'm, so as I've said, I'm a book purist and I don't like anything that's not in the books, but I can kind of see why it would be a good idea to add a female character because it's not awesome that there's no female characters at all in The Hobbit. And I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, it's just too I bad have no that problem. the female character has to have a love story. Yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with the decision. Well, not a huge problem with the decision to add a female character that's not in the books. But it's just the way that it was done was just so. They could easily made some of the dwarfs into females, right? I mean, it would be the best female dwarfs. Maybe they Seriously, are. they could have done that. I would, that would have been yeah, okay well, they got beards anyway. Would we? Bomber yeah. pretty much yeah. has big tits anyway. <laughs> Um, but but it's like and the only the I mean she she does have a couple of awesome fights but basically the the main thing she does is fall in love with the dwarf which is just, just why and it's the only substantial thing that she does. Well, and, where and else did hobbits come from? <laughs> Short paper, <laughs> pointy ears. I'm putting two together. But yeah, I just found that really disappointing. I found the idea behind it, like to add a female character. That's a great idea. Well done, Peter Jackson. But the way it was done was just so. No, I like Evangeline Lilly as an actress. Um, but yeah, it's not a particular. It's not a particularly nuanced character here. So... Actually, there was one cool part, right? Because Azog was, or Azog, I'm sorry, Blog was actually going after Killy. So she actually <laughs> shows up and she defends him, right? So I thought that was really empowering. Oh, she, she, but then Legolas she... shows up and takes the glory at the end. So yeah, it's she like, still damn you, it Legolas. Yeah, she, yeah. it's, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's also like a nod to the previous film where basically Legolas gets his ass kicked by Bog. So it's like, <laughs> uh, you know, and he tries, he tries to do the same, the same, uh, move that he did in the second film and uh, it fails this time because Legolas knows when to use his knives apparently so <laughs> well hey Legolas ran out of arrows <laughs> <laughs> nobody else thought that was awesome <laughs> it's about <laughs> fucking time the guy doesn't yeah. stop shooting <laughs> yeah. six movies later Legolas finally <laughs> runs out of the he like reached back three times like oh what the- no this is impossible <laughs> yeah I just always assume when he's not on screen, he is fletching arrows is what he's doing. So, <laughs> I think he has like a little elf runner boy, like a squire that just keeps running out and getting arrows for him. Or maybe he's like uh, the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. His He has return arrows. Yeah, Yandu, yeah. Maybe he has like return arrows. He can just whistle and they come uh. back. Okay, let's add that to Legolas's long list of powers. <laughs> anti <Anti-anarchy> matter <laughs> keyboards, psychic arrows. <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. The gravity defiance that Legolas does. That's part of the movie, right? Oh, and uh, so, that's someone said Gimli brings Legolas down to Earth. I did say literally, so <laughs> there's no <laughs> Gimli here to bring him down there. Felt like the entire block fight... We had, this is towards the end of the movie, so we were seeing the fight between Azog and Thorin, and then they had this, so I just felt tired because it's like Orc versus somebody, Orc versus somebody, that fight concluded, then this fight concluded, then he he brings back Orc, Azog back again from Ice thing. (laughs) I was like tired by the end of it, oh my god, it's the same fight over three times. Mm. Yeah. Wait, I forgot something in the war part. It's like the biggest... Fuck up this movie had. We drop Bayorn from an eagle and he doesn't fucking do anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like the one oh, thing I was looking forward to. I like, know. Oh, I thought they were saving, saving him for this. Being awesome. And then he gets helicoptered in by an eagle and then hits one guy. And that's it. And then we what have the 15 fuck? minutes of bulk. <laughs> <laughs> he should so have killed the... Bulk because that's what he does in the book, actually. But yeah. yeah. I was. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's the extended edition, you know. It better be. That 
There have been three <laughs> solid minutes of him just decimating orcs. I what hope he takes realize, down the whole catapult line. What you don't realize is killing that one guy actually was all they needed uh, to turn the tides. Yeah, that, yeah, that was the last. <laughs> he was really the linchpin. <laughs> On our last podcast, I defended Peter Jackson's ass about not having him do anything, and just running around and not fighting anybody. Because so I was like, oh no, he's going to be at the battle and he's going to kick some ass and people are going to love it. And then <laughs> that fucker, they drop him. Out. And I he get excited. Ass. <laughs> oh, and nothing. Uh, oh. I just find it like, why did they Why did they just helicopter him over there? It's like, just have him like arrive at the battle like in bear form already and then <laughs> let, let him turn human afterwards. That would be better. I feel like uh, that's one of many points where they kind of had great potential to do something awesome and didn't, and they had a lot of like storylines that didn't go anywhere, and yeah. and like with the with the Dune sandworm things. So first of all, I they I don't think that's what Tolkien meant when he like Sorry. my main problem with them is that they just appear and then they don't do anything and they just yeah. go away again. And if it's you have those kind of things, why would you not use them in battle? Also, where do they go? Like they they drill those holes and then they disappear again and then the orgs come out of those holes. Where do the worms go? Do they like they're, like, they're basically just a transportation system for worms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, uh, why? It's just that, that, just that just didn't make any sense. I, like, there's, that, the, there's lots of things like that, yeah. right? There's lots of there's the trolls that come that that come about and then they they just go away. Uh, yeah. for for a while, then you don't see them again at the end. It's yeah, they, they bring up a lot of stuff, but it feels like they don't have the uh, maybe the patience to to keep everything going that they bring up. They just think, oh yeah, let's let's put in this and this and this and this and this, but they don't carry it through to the end, which is yeah, a bit they're of like, a shame. yeah, they're like, oh, this will be awesome. Oh, and that will be awesome. Oh, we should do all the awesome things in this movie. <laughs> oh, what do we do with them? Oh, I don't know. Oh, let's just forget about them. Oh, whatever. But we have this next awesome thing. Let's use it this instead. And it's just it's just so incoherent. And yeah, I think like this watch. movie could have used with a proper editor or something. Somebody can come oh, in. Oh, yes. This is getting just too crazy, dear. Oh, I missed the proper window, but I have a question about the, the Toriel Kili thing. The, when she's talking to him and then... Legolas shows up behind him and he says something to her. Sorry, Keely says something to her in like Elvish or something. And she kind of goes, ooh, what is that? Anyone? He was oh, using Rosetta Stone this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he had in his hand. <laughs> because Rosetta I, am, Stone. I imagine that he said something that I won't say, but it was just a weird moment. Like we're supposed to know like he just said something amazing to her, but there's no <laughs> subtitles or... It's poor writing. They didn't know what to actually yeah. have him say. So he just throw anything <laughs> oh, out there. just say some random words and everything. Yeah. It's, it's totally a Joey moment. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay. Perhaps he's going all Tom and Giants vein and commenting on but, some of his members. Did you know this? <laughs> That's what I thought. She's like, oh, oh already. <laughs> he doesn't say we didn't discuss something. We didn't discuss the death of the dragon at the very beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, who cares about that? Oh, I care that about that so, because so Smog is a really cool character in the films. I like him in the film. I, I, yeah. I think they did a very bad thing about not killing him in the last movie. If it, in yeah. this movie, he just got lost in the shuffle. Yeah, what did we like, have? Oh we had, yeah. 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 yeah, but if they, yeah, if they, they Smog, killed him, that is that we forgot about him. Yeah, that's what it felt like, didn't it? They were like, oh, shit, we still got this dragon to deal with. Oh, we don't really have time for this. Oh, why didn't we do this last movie? Oh, let's just kill him in five minutes. But to yeah, me, that was one of the it. best scenes in the in the Hobbit trilogy. I think uh, it was the way a cool that... scene, but it was it wasn't placed very well. It was just yeah. no, no, of bit... course. I I, always, I I thought the same thing. Like, but at the same time, you could still make the argument, for example, that you know you can watch the Lord of the Rings as one film basically for of twelve hours, and if you do it with the Hobbit, then you probably won't notice. Either it's like binge watch binge watching a TV yeah. show. Um, I mean, in that sense, maybe it's not going to be a problem if people just yeah. power through them through these films. But yeah, I mean, I would have liked to, to have seen it at the end of the last film. Uh, at the same time, though, I understand why they did it this way, because when once the town is destroyed, then you might have to deal with the consequences of that, you know, like immediately. So it's it's you can't just say, well, wait for a year and then you say, oh, OK, these these people are all fine because um, <laughs> they well, they're, they're not actually waiting that's a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <but> it, <laughs> those people just, that's like the next day for them <laughs> yeah that's what i mean so you can't just have the last scene be like smog dying and the, the town being destroyed and then you have to say well wait for a year wait see what happens and then you see oh okay they all got out fine but, um, yeah. well 
what they <laughs> probably not... thought was that to a normal movie going audience who don't read the books or whatever that yeah. the dra- if the dragon dies at the end of the second movie why does there need to be a third movie yeah that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's- <laughs> It's 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 because I I, I I also think like you know that that had to put, I mean that's a good opening that's a good way to get the audience invested at the beginning like you see oh yeah shit this this stuff is really gonna get gonna get heavy here um, and you know um, I like the fact that they didn't have Bard basically use a, a, a ballista to to fire to fire the arrow. No, he used his son, son instead. Why is that was so? Stupid. Oh. No, I'm with you. I'm with I, you. Find it, I found it kind of, kind of touching, actually. But it's, yeah, maybe that's but it just... Was, like, it was I found even... it terrifying. I'm so scared for that poor little kid. Yeah. Well, and whatever he jammed into the side of those things would not have... I mean, he must be incredibly strong <laughs> the, yeah, to make yeah. his big b- big bow or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> not to mention that it, like, killed mm. a dragon. Like, it went right through him. <laughs> Fucking stupid. <laughs> 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 Don't even but show yeah. me the win list if you're gonna do that. So I, I yeah. see that. So if they kill the dragon in the second movie, then it would have been like, what, what, what's the point of watching this movie? The movie is done. Yeah. They, they could have done something. I, at least a saw <laughs> Come on see what White happened Council. to Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just felt the movie, the second movie, did not have a proper ending at all. So yeah. It, to me, that wasn't. A, I mean, that wasn't a serious problem because I know that the middle part is always the hardest thing to do because you have to. Carry through, carry the the story from the first film further, and still, you know, leave it open enough so that you don't uh, f- leave it on a feeling like, oh yeah, the story is concluded here because you well, need maybe to. That's like, a sign, maybe that's a sign that there shouldn't have been three movies in the. Yeah, yeah, I mean, think about think about Empire Strikes Back. Okay, at the end of that movie, there was like complete chaos. Like it didn't end. Like Luke lost his hand and everything, and Han was in carbonite and. Luke's like, I guess I'm going to Dagobah. But uh, after that, it's like, you know, what? what but you got the happened? big reveal, right? I I'm your father it. thing. <laughs> so. But yeah, you got a big reveal, yeah. but you didn't have any finish point to that movie. Yeah. No. yeah. That's true. Well, they escaped. Just, that so was it. So Sparks would have said yeah. to Bilbo, I am your father's brother's nephew's <laughs> former <laughs> roommate. <laughs> no. That would have worked. You'd have gone, have I'm a, a my, my or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a uh, question but, for that. Really, uh, in in connection to the whole ending part, um, in, in the second movie, the extended edition, is does does the do, do the uh, dwarves actually go to the high eagle king king, de- or is it or are they right. just left? That's or are they just was, left yeah. on on that uh, mountain or what whatever yeah. it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it was entirely skipped. You're right. Yeah, I it, think they just, just in his mouth. Right? <laughs> okay, because cause, cause they could have used that actually. They could have used that as, as sort of like an an ending. They 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 go to the king, the eagle king, and he uh, and he talks about all the the dangers there. And Smog is almost is over there. We can see him and everything like that. It's, they could have done something uh, in in the first between the first and there. Yeah, I think they could have done something better with that specifically. But- um, so any other points we want to make? Uh, <laughs> make I, kinda... <laughs> I have one about her. Yes. I totally ship her and Thranduil. <laughs> at the end, <laughs> at the end when she says, was, why does it hurt so much? Take it away. Scene. And then she, was... and then he sends Legolas off, right? Get him out of the way. Mm-hmm. Move right well, in there. Well, that's why he did yeah. that. Yeah. Get mm-hmm. my son away. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can get my Oh, he has, yeah, yeah, he has the was... eyebrows for creeping. He does. Right. But it was he such does. A, I, I hated that scene. It was so ridiculous. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, just, there, were sh- there aren't any doors to creep in uh, his <laughs> house. There were two oh, pieces nice. of dialogue in this movie that just completely made me face palm. One was the whole thing about Legolas's mother, like out right? of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Why? It's horrible. And the other one was about Aragorn. Much... Mm. I was yeah, okay but... with the Aragorn thing only because Legolas kind of okay took the. It. Well, Legolas kind of took the place of Arwen's brothers in the in the, mm-hmm. the Lord of the Rings yeah. movies. So, like when yeah. when Legolas shows up and Aragorn's like Legolas, and he goes over and he like shakes his hand and slaps him on the back, and he's all excited to see him. It makes okay. more sense in the co- continuity of the movies. But yeah. but Aragorn is like ten at that point. Exactly. Yeah. He's not. Like, he doesn't have. Well, I, he's not called I think Strider. He's yeah. Why would they call him Strider? He's, he's, like, <laughs> 
just hanging out with her. He's just a I, kid. I, I don't know Why the would answer. You take... I, mean, you... I know. How old he is? Shh, I want to hear Teddy say. What, what is it? Right. Okay. Um, two Towers Extended Edition. He says he's 87 mm-hmm. to Eowyn. And the, and this and these films are sixty years before. So he's in his twenties. Oh shit! Yeah. All right, I'm all so okay. Strider, <laughs> motherfucker! Drop the Strider. <laughs> like he first I, I left haven't done that. He was twenty, so it, it's all right. That's what that's his Twitter handle, right? I take everything back. <laughs> Anyways, isn't it isn't it just like a Jesus thing, really? You want to go to this country to to meet this savior of of the exactly. uh, middle earth? So I don't like that at all. Yeah, especially uh, Tranduil, who is so isolationist, and he's still an isolationist, right? Him doing this is kind of just out of character. Uh, I did like them kind of like focusing in on like that the elves dying and him being like, "No, we can't do this." I mean, what is, this is nothing to us. You'll all be dead in a hundred years, and we'll all like these people would have still be alive if we didn't get involved. And I like how they kind of tried to point toward that because you know how we always pick on elves for not getting involved but this is kind of why because like a life of a man is nothing to an elf so these are like little things that happen they don't even care most of the time plus the guy just lost his great elk which was so <laughs> epic uh, poor poor cg animal thing if they had to make the hobbit first do you think they would well obviously it's just our opinions but do you guys think they would have done a better job of it because it had to be I, good rather than just building on the reputation of the past movies? Yeah, there's less expectation yeah. of what it should be. I think it, it would have at least had more identity. They would probably yeah, have yeah, made it I, I, a kid's like, movie. I do think they had to do more to the story. They couldn't have just gone from the book to the TV uh, or, or the movie screen just like that. Like, as I said, you know, the, the part about the ox wasn't fleshed out as much. There were, there were definitely, like, places where that needed patching up. Uh, so I, I felt like... The, and Peter Jackson saw it, but I just he went just too far the other way. One problem with the, with the Hobbit is that they knew it was going to make money. They didn't have to try. They knew it was going to sell. And they, and they made the movie accordingly. And with The Lord of the Rings, being a book purist, there's many things I'm not happy with in the movies... But you can't like you can't argue that Peter Jackson didn't try to convey his vision of the books, and it was still kind of I I, I do think Peter Jackson, even though we disagree on very fundamental things, cares about the Lord of the Rings and wanted to bring his vision of it across, and it was very much a work of love. Yet people stick leaves to like fake leaves to trees because they were the wrong kind of trees and got the and imported sheep from the UK because the New Zealand sheep didn't look medieval enough or whatever. <laughs> so he really he really he really cared about the Lord of the Rings to an extent that I don't think anyone cared about the Hobbit or it would have been a very different movie. Exactly. And I think if the Hobbit if the Hobbit had come first, it wouldn't have been mainly to make money. I think with the Lord mm. of the Rings the motivation was like, oh, I love this book. I'm going to try and make the best movie out of it that I can. And with The Hobbit, it was like, oh, there's this book, and if I make a movie out of it, I'll make a shit ton of money. So <laughs> I'm going to make as much make money as I can. Uh, so I'll make even I'm more money out of it, and I don't give a shit. Does anybody <laughs> yeah. know the backstory about, you know, because uh, uh, Gilmero Del Toro was supposed to uh, direct it first, right? And he, even, and he even gets the screenplay credit. What happened there? I kind of heard that uh, Del Toro like waited a year in New Zealand, but the, but they never got the green light or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was like just that. taking so long. There was something with MGM, and they yeah, they were ba- they were basically out of money. They, they, I mean, they were in financial trouble when they started filming, and then after, I mean, the, while the film was in production, there were so many problems. Like at some point, um, they couldn't. I, I think I remember they couldn't film it when in one location or something, and then uh, Peter Jackson like had a you know. Um, I mean, he he fell ill at some point and all that stuff. And uh, it's it's yeah, uh, just the production was very troubled. Like people at some point were even questioning if we were going to see the film the film at all. Um, so me, <laughs> Tanya would have been happy with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, um, Guillermo del Toro still has screen writing credit. Uh, I think it's it's probably the, the bad dialogue can be chucked. It can be maybe attributed <laughs> to that party. Oh, no. <laughs> his English-speaking films are not as good as his Spanish Spanish language films, I think. No, I, I feel like Del Toro wouldn't have been so loyal about Lord of the Rings, right? He wouldn't have tried to put Frodo in it and then uh, the original Bilbo in it and Legolas in it. I feel all those parts might have come in because of Peter Jackson. I mean, I'm only speculating, of course, but no, I feel like... We, we can't say for sure. 
We can't yeah, say for sure. I would definitely want to have a look at the script when it was Del Toro doing it and what happened, actually. <laughs> and why they used so much of his bad script. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the design is not as, as interesting. Like, it's not as detailed or not as um, subtle as it was in The Lord of the Rings, anyway. So to, to, be, to be fair, there's a lot there that's not that easy to pick up. If you want. Like, I've only watched it once. But last time I met up with... with some guys from the German talking society, someone brought one of those design art books for the movie. And if you mm. look at how much, how much thought went into designing the dwarves yeah. costumes, even yeah. though you don't even like they, the individual dwarves don't get that much focused screen time or anything, but a lot of work went into designing their costumes. Exactly. All the I don't like saying positive so... things about the movie, but that was actually nicely done. And the book is really cool. And I recommend it. And yeah. It's nice I, to look at yeah, yeah. I think I like the art, art, the weapons and everything. That definitely did feel like a step up for me. Okay, so let's start wrapping up. Uh, would you guys want to give your final comments on the movie before we do? Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of... Uh, well, there's, there's a lot a lot in this, more than, need, more than there needs to be, I think. But at the same time, I think the problem is that he cares too... Uh, he probably cared too much uh, and at the same time not enough. Like, he cared much more about getting back into the world and, you know, going back to New Zealand and shooting, you know, with this story, you know, uh, uh, about, you know, about the characters. Um, and yeah, it, it just feels like there's a lot of love, but it doesn't actually go anywhere, really. It's it's kind of aimless, kind of baggy, you know, um, and yeah, it's it's it doesn't need to be three films in the end. I I just think like they're not as the films are definitely not as bad like as we probably made it made them out to be like um but mm. still they're not they're not <laughs> they're not like on the definitely not on the same level as you know the other three films and it's it's a shame because the Hobbit is basically a, a, a story that you can adapt very easily because we've seen I mean I don't know if any of you guys saw the animated version of this yeah. um. Yeah, the way they have the greatest adventure, and that's that's. Uh, I I just love that. Anyway, it's, it's it, this has an innocence to it. Like it doesn't. Uh, it it knows what it is. This this uh, these three films don't really know what they are. And that's the problem. I wanted to say that essentially that you're right that it feels that the movie is too sh- uh, too long. That's we can go through that again essentially, but. For me, it's, it still feels like a cop out in a, in a way, and 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 yeah, I think I, I've changed my mind on one po- point. The whole when Smart could could have died, I think that's that it's actually okay that it got killed in the first part of the third movie. If there has to be three movies, I think that's okay. But uh, what I really want to ask, it would, it would say is yeah, it's put out a question. If if anybody actually liked the way that Bjorn looked, because uh, I I've been thinking about this for half of podcasts really. <laughs> Coltrane is actually not very tall or uh, or essentially. <laughs> but you can make it <laughs> Do you like Conan Stevens or something? You know, I mean, he was supposed to be one of the orcs anyway, right? <laughs> Just repurposing. Funny you say he looked scrawny because um, if you watch the extras from the second movie, um, they actually um size him up. He was on like on a green screen and set, and they like uh, made him bigger by twenty percent. Well, that was not enough for me. At least. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm two. I'm two meters and four centimeters, which is uh, six foot eight. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I would say that any any guy that looks like he's only slightly large, uh, larger than than Gandalf, is not tall enough for me as a, <laughs> as this werebear. <laughs> so you should have played. Are you me saying on. you should have played him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was hinting at it, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Quick, anybody you know, has Peter Jackson's email ID? We can just email like, Patrick. <laughs> maybe maybe, can, yeah, maybe they're just still trying to my, get you on the DVD. Yeah, edit me in instead. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> well, I guess my final thing for the movie would be that. I gave the first two like a four and a five. I don't remember which order it was in. I think I gave the first one a five and the second one a four. But a lot of that was because I expected, like, 
I was always like, well, I want to see where it ends, like how they finish it off. And I was always giving them the benefit of the doubt. I was like, oh, if this is going where I think it is, it's going to be good. And I like this movie because of it. But now that I've seen their ending, I really would go back and be like, like a three and a three on the first two movies. I, it just disappoints me that I was so let down by this movie because it wasn't, it didn't build upon the last two like I thought it would. Yeah, I, 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 that's, I agree with that so much. You know, I also give the movie a benefit of the doubt at every turn. You know, let's wait until the last. Let's wait until the last. But yeah, that's just, it was a letdown. Yeah, <laughs> I will wait until the extended edition of that one. <laughs> you're, just, really you're just dragging it out. You're dragging it out. <laughs> yeah, just I'm give up on it now. I'm hoping for like but one dragging. last scene with Bard uh, to just like The top see- scene. Right. I just want him to be established. I, I just want Dale to be like recognized as what it is at the end of the book. Like it's going to be re um, rebuilt and it's going to start again. And Bard is the new leader and the dwarves have a new king as well. And Balin's going to go back to Moria and all that stuff is going to happen. And that's not mentioned at all. <laughs> yeah. Who gives a shit? Bilbo's going back to an auction. <laughs> they, they needed the screen time. To at Elf, least, at least Lobelia Sackville Baggins was in the movie. Yeah. So. That made me actually, <laughs> what am I complaining about? Smile. That made me smile because I thought, yeah, she actually is notorious in the books for stealing his silverware. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I also find the way that they ended the film very, very interesting that they sort of moved into the, the scene where we get a look at the map in the Fellowship. I thought that was actually well done. I, I like that. Oh, yeah, that was actually cool. That's like, okay, maybe there's three scenes in this movie that I like. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would um, say that I'm, I'm, I wish that they hadn't made them because... I, you know, over the last three years, I think the anticipation and the excitement just of, of wondering what they would do was worth my 3D ticket price. Um, but it definitely made me appreciate Lord of the Rings even more and how much I love that one, which I'll continue to watch, rewatch every year. This I'll probably I would say that I would watch them every couple of years, maybe. And just then remember here. why I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's a very good point. I mean, we had lots of fun during the way we got to do all these podcasts, speculate about what's gonna happen. Now we get to do that for the next Star Wars trilogy. So. <laughs> oh. Damn it! I was about to say that. Can I just? <laughs> I don't. But I, I, I actually think Star I actually think the the second Hobbit movie podcast was the first one that I was on. Maybe, possibly, I think. Oh, wow. so maybe oh. it was the first one I was ever on. So it could be something at least. Something yeah, good has come out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was going to say that. So many good podcasters out of it. These yeah, podcasters I mean, overall, are only yeah. bred for one thing. <laughs> it's a podcast about the Hobbit. Oh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I guess, I guess, I've made my opinions about the movie pretty clear. But I, I just, I don't know. I, I mean, good things came out of it. Like I met amazing people at, when I went to the New Zealand premiere of, of the second part. I got into this podcast. Podcasting with you guys was fun. Getting angry about the movies a lot is fun. Um, <laughs> But I just feel like it's not the, like, I, I understand that everyone has different visions of what they read, and I can respect that. And with The Lord of the Rings, there was respect and love for the source material that completely lacked in the Hobbit movies. And that makes me very sad. And what's maybe for me the saddest thing about them is that if you just look at the at the scenes that they did well, that they adapted from the books, that were just centered around the original story, you you can see that they that they had the capacity to make a beautiful one or maybe two beautiful movies out of this book that would have been close to the source material and would have been perfectly good and wouldn't have been so I don't know disconnected and confused and I don't know and it's just such a money making thing and it makes me very sad because this is kind of the world I grew up in and I don't like seeing it treated that way. <laughs> Neither does Christopher I... Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tedda, before I steal any more of your lines, <laughs> would you want to comment? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, meh. <laughs> that was exactly what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, d- <laughs> that's stole my line. Uh, echo what, something I say. Yes, it was cool, but really, in the end, it was unnecessary. Yeah. 
I mean, that made MGM and Warner Brothers and all that a lot of money. Yeah, I'm so looking at box office merger, and everyone made like a billion dollar each, all the movies. <laughs> so that's like no, pretty impressive. You no, know way I think that is because they don't have any more f- franchises, basically. I mean, Warner Brothers, they um, didn't actually, they don't have Harry Potter. They don't have, no. uh, the. Lo- I mean, they don't have the, the Nolan Batman films anymore to make them a billion dollars each time. So No, nah, they're going to do the... Uh, you know, the Justice League movie and all that. Yeah, but, yeah, but they're going to ruin that. Who's <laughs> you know, my, my, my first podcast was the Man of Steel one, and I came into it thinking, yeah, it's a good movie, I'm going to defend it. And then I haven't actually, I haven't, the, the podcast, everyone else's views like, ruined me, I've never seen, actually watched the movie since. And I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, it was rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. It was, it really was. And just, Zack Snyder's just going to, like, fuck up Justice League yeah. some way. The problem with that one was that they were, they were trying to make a Christopher Nolan film without Christopher Nolan di- Christopher, <laughs> Christopher yeah. directing. Uh, Zach, your comments? Um, yeah, I think mine pretty much is an echo of Ted's meh. Like, the, in long form, yeah, pretty much, I just, even at the beginning, I never frankly was too in, um, anticipating any of these movies. I, I, was, I just wasn't excited for whatever reason. Just the whole notion of Three movies and The Hobbit just didn't seem right at all to me. And I, of course, I've been burned by the prequel of Star Wars enough that I've kind of lost all hope. So I wasn't hyping it. And for that reason, I wasn't upset by any of it. But pretty much, yeah, I just it was all lukewarm, unexciting. There were some good scenes in there, but nothing that blew me away. And I, I'm not going to be doing that yearly watch of this like I always do with The Lord of the Rings or more with that. I just I don't have the degree of uh, just pure entertainment from this. And I, I don't know. I just I don't it just wasn't fun for me. And I think that's my enduring feeling. I guess if I uh, that whole discussion about this being kind of driven by, you know, commercialism and making a bunch of money, I'm glad at the very least if we had to pick that this is the one that kind of got shafted by that and not Lord of the Rings. I'm happy Lord of the Rings got its fair shake. Good, good. Uh, Alex? Yeah, I, I thought. The trilogy was okay. I mean, it could have been a lot better, but it could have been a lot worse. And there were some good moments, like a lot of the Bilbo scenes, the Bilbo Gollum scene, and a lot of the Bilbo um, Thorn interactions were really, really good. And, well, a lot of scenes were great, but there was a lot of useless material as well. So it would, it made for a trilogy that was just okay overall so it's not as good as lord of the rings and well I'll probably not watch it as much as i watched lord of the rings <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it probably didn't make as as lasting an impression on me as the lord of the rings movies did and my com- final comments would have said the same thing uh, as you guys did all you know it just felt lacking i, I mean I'm, on the whole i'm pretty happy that i see saw it and i'm glad these are out there and hopefully in time my opinion will uh, you know go up of them um but at the moment you know oh thank god lord of the rings is still there and, and peter jackson's not bad like luke is going around and re-editing lord of the rings or so anything like that I just thought of another question, would be, which is, how do you see the future of this franchise going on? Well, um, Christopher Tolkien has to die, then someone will sell the silver no, and then we'll, no, we'll, no, we'll no, go through no, it all no, again. No, 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 no. make that's, it. How many of you see him as the yeah, last guardian good. of The Silmarillion's through. probably a, um, uh, it's not like a trilogy's worth. It's probably a whole cinema um, universe is worth. This of is movies. my greatest nightmare. Seriously. They are going to make a trilogy about, about it, of course. Well, they could probably yeah, make it's a good. Be, they could make it. It's going to be a super epic, super epic, awesome, uh, high frame rate 3D with interaction 4D actually because you get sprayed when there comes water in and stuff like that. It'll be a stars TV show. <laughs> <laughs> it's ballet vision. Yeah. Do you know on the video game friend it looks like they're they are in good hands. Like I mean uh, the Shadow of Mordor looked really good and had a very good story in it. And it's like they might be well. samples of the game. Well. So on the video game side at least it's doing well. You named one. <laughs> <laughs> You're one for three hundred. <laughs> Yeah, I played Battle of Middle Earth for a while. Maybe they can make a movie out of that. Yeah. I don't know. It's all just oh. Vista shots the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Boy, I mean, yeah, it's too. like you could you could basically. I mean, there are portions of the submarine that you could definitely make like into a into a movie. Um, 
like or you could just but... leave it alone please <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I if, i'm not try. against it i'm not against it if they get someone who is competent who can prove i mean that they i mean if they if they mess it up i won't have to watch them ever again i can watch them once and then never have to think about them again it's but like i okay, can't they're, they're... unwatch the hobbit i wish i could but i can't unwatch the hobbit i can't unsee the things i've seen and i uh, don't want anyone to to like I don't know. I if anyone touches the Silmarillion. Oh no, I, I I feel like this has terrible. to be done with Silmarillion uh-huh. because I can't consume it in the current form. I need help. <laughs> I need podcast. more pictures in the book. You want a Silmarillion <laughs> smoothie? Among, even among I need a world fans. of a Silmarillion book. <laughs> even among the Tolkien fans, the Silmarillion is not like you know. It's not a book that's universally loved by everyone who likes the Lord of the Rings because it's not like a real story. Like the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit are. It's not a narrative. It's basically a history book. Works best best as a TV as a TV show, maybe if you make it. But yeah, on on a more serious note, if it had to be made, the the, the format to do it would probably be Game of Thrones. Like I guess, hmm. like have it as a, as yeah. that kind of as a HBO mini Yeah, but I still hope it doesn't. It's not gonna happen. Oh and you don't get sex position with that one. <laughs> oh God. So yeah. you think? I, so you yeah. Think. <laughs> oh, God. I'm gonna that. see Melian I, I, I bang. Want, I just don't want HBO to do it. I, I want stars to do it now. <laughs> you'll have you'll have elf wood. position. I would stars in short time to do it. Don't worry, elves don't have sex anyway. No, no they just I, stand in the forest they, for hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> they just, like in in Star Trek fashion, they would just like hold hands and you know rub their knuckles and stuff. Uh, they do it like they do it in Demolition Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, elves. So funny. <laughs> Shall we wrap it up then? I think we wrapped it up a little while ago, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, guys. Wrap it, wrap it up again. Okay, okay. So that's it, guys. Thank you for uh, listening to our podcast. Uh, we do invite you to come and check out our website, vokpodcast.com, because we can only show the latest 50 on our RSS feeds and iTunes and stuff. So there's like a whole backlog uh, of stuff uh, that you can uh, you can listen if you visit our site, including the entire Lord of the Rings collection. Uh, so that's it. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Yeah, listen to the Wolfcast. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, listeners, we're going to briefly take a break from the rest of the podcast to get uh, Greg or Claudius the Fool as uh, review for the movies. So, Greg, uh, how would you rate this last movie, Hobbit 3? Uh, I'd give it a like a 3. Uh, I'm trying to think of a clever alternative to lemon cakes. Three Arkenstones. <laughs> yeah, uh, that makes even sense. Even though there's only one Arkenstone. But... What's the what's the jewels or the diamonds the uh, uh, Trondil was after? Oh yeah, the uh, the jewels of Laskar, I believe. Jewels of Laskar. But, See, uh, that's why I, 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 I wish I could have had you on the main <laughs> podcast because you know things like this. But yeah, I really, I was, I mean, of course, this was the the movie that ever, you know, I wanted because it's got the battle. I was really looking forward to it, and I just, I found the whole battle thing underwhelming, and I didn't. Mm-hmm. There were a couple scenes, you know, when the elven, you know, the dwarven shield wall that was really cool, and then the elves jumped over yeah. it, and I was like yeah. in it, but. I just it felt it underwhelming and like I felt like Peter Jackson did not want to show any character that you might even recognize dying on the screen except for Thorin. <laughs> but and like just so many little things that the the people of Lake Town were nice plucky warriors, but they all should have been dead <laughs> six times <laughs> over. But uh, and just the divergences from the book in regards to the battle, I don't care that they showed like the White Council Council stuff. That was I enjoyed that. It was fun to see the battles and Elrond kicking ass. But yeah, I had I had problems with it. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And uh, and and how about the, now that the trilogy is done? How do you feel about the entire trilogy in general? Then I I really liked the first movie when I when I first saw it. I was so happy to get back into the world. I I gave that like a four or four point five. But then it was kind of downhill after that. So I'd give it like a probably a three point five overall, maybe. I mean, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is like in another class. It's you know I'm super nostalgic about it, and they're some of my favorite movies. And these just didn't really come close to that.
No, I, I agree with everything you said so much, you know, like, uh, exam- exactly, the, the fight in the battle at the end was so inconsequential, you know, because the eagles come in the end anyway, so I wasn't like, oh, oh, what's going to happen, right? Uh, but Even part though, of like, it's probably I... because I'm, I'm a book reader as well, so... Mm-hmm. Well, I, I I love the book. It's like I read The Hobbit before I read Lord of the Rings years before I read Lord of the Rings, and it's it's you know one of the few books I read like when I was a kid for fun, and I always remember the the battle, and like that was I was so happy to see it, and then the armies came together. I was like, this is great, and yeah, they made some little changes, but actually having it all come together, and then I kept waiting for Bayorn to show up because in the books, yeah, the eagles come and Bilbo gets knocked out, but they they even go out. Tolkien goes out of his way in the books to say that the eagles were still outnumbered and they the tide didn't turn until Bayorn showed up and he did his huge bear thing and started fucking everybody up. And then when they showed Bayorn, I was so excited. Like I almost jumped out of my seat and then we don't see him again. (laughs) So I kept waiting for this amazing scene of Bayorn, you know, running through the armies and then carrying, you know, because he basically takes Thorin off the battlefield and that just didn't happen. And I was, I was super, I think uh, Peter on the forums shared my uh, disappointment that we didn't get more of Bayorn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was my like major thing. Uh, you said you had some problem with the White Council scene at the end. So this is the Dogledor thing, right? Where the Galadriel fends off uh, Sauron. Yeah, I just I know she's like supposed to be very powerful and and this, but but she's less than. I mean, more uh, Sauron is a Maiar. He's he's a spe- you know original spirit, one of the first mm-hmm. ones that came into the world. And I know she's powerful and she's got the ring. Of, I believe the Ring of Fire, Narya. But it just the way she like basically just bitch slapped him. I didn't think it was that easy. And in my mind, from the White Council, even though we never actually see it in the books, it's always told to us through uh, Gandalf and Saruman that it was kind of like all five of them or four of them putting their powers together to to kick him out. And the movie they made it as if it was all Galadriel and everyone else was like was hopeless. But uh, it, I love the scene. I love like the Ring Race 2.0 to see them in their their new armor or old armor. But uh, it was the battles were fine to see them, you know, having their little ghost battles and everything. But I just she said Morgoth and that made me happy. <laughs> so I was I was happy to get the Morgoth name drop. But yeah, I just didn't. I, I felt that you didn't have to. You had to see it for the trilogy, you know, because it's part of the Lord of the Rings. Also, I understand it, but it's it's not part of the Battle of Five Armies, really. Mm-hmm. I think I I agree with you. You know the. F- the confrontation between the White Council and Sar- Sauron was was I was really looking forward to that, and it was and it did start off really well, as you said, with the ring rates and everything. But then, yeah, the thing that Galadriel did at the end and dri- driving of Sauron by all by herself, yeah, that didn't sit well with me. I mean, this Radagast, this Saruman, and they did nothing, you know. <laughs> and I I always. Until we saw Radagast for the first time, like I always thought Radagast was this like super badass kind of Gandalf equivalent. And uh, every yeah. time he comes on the screen, like he's he's comic relief, and the, the wizards are not funny. And yeah, he speaks to birds, and he's got bird shit on his on his hat. But I just I don't the weird choices that Peter Jackson made in in these movies, like where the fun parts come in, it always seems weird. Even this with Alfred and all, like everyone's dying, and then there's a boob joke. Like it's just all this I didn't get it. And Radagast, I couldn't take him seriously, but uh-huh. he's uh, yeah. No, it was the, the 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 shit on his head was really distracting, and literally, he had shit on his head, and uh, that shit on IMAX 60 frames yeah, per ridiculous. second looked horrible. <laughs> so yeah, I got it's a... so bad picking it picking it apart because like I I love the movie. I mean, I love the world, and I'm happy to get into it. But you know, we're talking about it. So that's the only, I'm not. I didn't. I wasn't sitting there like going, "Oh man, this sucks." I really did enjoy seeing everything. I'm not the kind of person who just loves. I don't like talking about something if I didn't like it. I'd rather just not talk about it. But you're making me talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I, you know, my feelings have been uh, very mixed on this movie. So the other thing I want to really ask you is, I felt the movies were not goofy enough i felt the movies were too serious and and for me the hobbits is a i feel it's a children's book and should be a bit more goofy and it's taking itself too seriously then i was talking to a co-worker of mine and he did not like the movies because he found the movies too goofy yeah too goofy and i was like no, That's the movie is too serious. They keep talking about home and sentiment and all that. Said so, no, the battle scene, the thing with Bomber and Bofa, and, and the thing with the rabbit sleds. No, the movie is really goofy. And I was like, no. So how how do you feel the movie? Oh, I, I, I thought that in the first movie they kind of like he kind of 
had played it, the, the line well between the jokey stuff because it is a children's book. It was written for nine year olds, you know, and and the serious, you know, trying to reclaim your ancestral homeland. But like anytime Bomber's on the screen, you can't help but be but laugh at him. And and there's all these like comic relief characters that it just it mm-hmm. seemed to take you out of the the darkness and the realness. And even the, in the second movie when they're escaping the goblins and they're you know all their weird acrobats on the on the Indiana Jones kind oh, of yeah. escape scene, yeah. like none of you can't take any of that seriously in. in you know, the big picture, you can't take any of it seriously, but those kind of things take me out of it. Like when, you know, 12 dwarves fight off 600 goblins, you know, it's like, we've got this guys. It's fine. I'm pretty sure if there were 600 goblins attacking you, they'd get you, you know, <laughs> but they can just kick them and throw rocks. So that's fine. Man, I yeah. really didn't like these movies. I apparently I'm sorry. No, you're, you're so right. <laughs> I mean, I can compare that goblin tunnel thing to the Balrog uh, on Mines of Moria and that played the tone was so different in mind right you, you I, it, it was so serious you i was on the edge of the seat oh my god are they gonna die or something but here it just felt you know they're kicking their asses and well you, you knew know, they were all yeah. gonna at least get to the battle so like there really was no drama as to who's gonna make it unless you had no clue because you know that they're all gonna be there at least for the battle I watched a four-hour fan edit, and it really changed my feelings about the movie. Before watching the four-hour fan edit, I thought, "Oh, Peter Jackson is only doing this for money, you know. He's he's he, you know, he ballooned this movie to make it into three movies. He added all this unnecessary stuff." But then when you watch the four-hour edit, and it's it's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the four-hour edit, so I can't comment on it. But uh, I never thought he does it for money. He does it because he loves the world and he loves the books and he wants to spend as much time as possible in there. And yeah, he's going to yeah, make more true. money. I understand that, but you know, you don't do something if you if it's just for. Well, you probably do do it if it's just for. Uh, money. I, I mean, I like the, to give the benefit of the doubt by thinking he wants to spend as much time in the world as possible. I mean, I think the budget came up to like seven fifty million, and some of the things are if he made. Two movies he would have not made as much money as if he made like three movies but then the four I read it really changed my mind like a lot of the set pieces are actually not in the books right like the I'm really mixed now so I kind of appreciate Peter Jackson for what he did well basically uh, the books if if Bilbo's there then that's the book you know if Bilbo's not in the scene then that wasn't in the book because Bilbo's your hmm. only point of view character the whole time yeah, but in a strange way, I think he did elevate the material by by putting all this Dogledore thing in it, by even adding uh, Kate the from whole... Lost in it, the love triangle uh, also. Uh, you know, and strangely, it actually made the movie a bit more interesting, <laughs> or the trilogy a bit more interesting. <laughs> well, I, I love getting the whole, like, the, the prologue to the movie, to the Fellowship of the Ring is, like, one of my favorite, you know, getting the whole, you know, Galadriel, and, you know, telling the story. And then we kind of get that again in the, the beginning of the first movie and i love that and i, I kind of that set the tone i was so excited and it kind of changed after that but but yeah but so you're on record as saying you're you're cool with with tariel <laughs> you didn't mind that at all because she actually made me like orlando bloom which is very tough to do <laughs> i i forget did killy live or die no i'm uh, philly and killy both died in the book killy and killy both died um uh, and tron died and then only Legolas lives. <laughs> yeah, Legolas was, was not in the book. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. but the, I mean, those scenes she, he made, you know, where she's, uh, you know, where he gives her the ring and then later when he dies and she's like crying over him. And I couldn't, I wanted to, I was like, just, I felt, not, I didn't feel what they wanted me to feel. Like I couldn't take it seriously. I, it's, I don't know why it, I'm a book purist, but I couldn't, mm-hmm. it did nothing for me. You know, the scenes that affected me were when Thranduil is walking through the, and seeing the dead bodies of the elves around him. And like, that's the most powerful scene of the movie for me, where he's just realizing like, what the hell am I doing here? I'm fighting over jewels and these, my immortal, you know, brethren are, are dead because of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was just, I don't, I don't get the whole, I know he needed some more, I, uh, whatever. I don't want to just complain about Kate the whole time. She's a lovely actress. She had very pointy ears. I know she loves the books, but I don't think she should have been in it. But yeah, that's just no. Me. I mean, if you like condense everything that she has done, uh, all she's done is uh, have a love triangle and then fight Blog, who's like not even like the main villain. Uh, yeah. The entire well, that's Blog the other side, because <laughs> the books, he is the big main villain because Azog's oh. been dead for two hundred years. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> and Bulk is the guy that I'm convinced is Rain Wilson because he, for some reason, he reminds me of Dwight from The Office. There's some like expression <laughs> he does, and I see him, and and Dwight was like obsessed with Lord of the Rings, so I I know it probably isn't, but every time I look at him, I just picture Dwight Schrute dressed up as an orc. <laughs> I love Billy Connolly as Dane. That was super fun to see. Um, and I watched the second time I saw it with my parents and my dad's like, why do I know that guy? Why do I know that guy's like, it's the guy from Boondock Saints. Oh, thank you. Because <laughs> he played the main, uh, the father in Boondock Saints. <laughs> but he was happy to see him too. No, I thought it was Stephen Fry. Oh, was Eric Idle? No, Stephen Fry was the... the oh, okay. This guy played the dwarves. Sorry. Billy Connolly played the Iron Hill dwarves or something. Yeah. Ah, okay. Now I... Yeah. Right, right. So it was Stephen Fry. Uh, Stephen Fry? Stephen Fry played uh, the master yeah, of Lake Town. The master of it. Okay, okay. Everything Who, another guy, like, he's this conniving, evil guy, and he just comes off as, as goofy idiot, and then his stupid sidekick gets 20 minutes of screen time. I, yeah. I, I, I at least wanted Alfred to be killed by the end of it. And the fact that they didn't kill him, like, ugh. But... That was really strange. They spent so much time on Alfred. Like, did he have as much screen was... time as Bilbo? <laughs> I probably did, but I thought it was going or leading somewhere. And then when he just gets away, you know, like, and, and uh, Bard gave him <laughs> enough opportunities where after he sees him run away for the fourth time, you'd think he'd just put an arrow through him. But it's just, it was one thing that uh, and just also like <laughs> so much more could have been shown, but they chose to show Alfred, you know, shtick, which just annoyed me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like they're going, those people were going through the same stuff that, you know, the Rohirrim were going through at Helm's Deep and in, in, in the two towers, it's this super dark and you think they're literally at their last days and they're, you know, when they're holed up in the hall and then, you know, yeah, they're saved at the last second. But in this one, it's like the people of Lake Town couldn't ever be killed. Like the, the same 25 people you kept seeing at mm-hmm. five times and, and they're taking down these, you know, super orcs and with, with sticks and, and they don't have armor. Yeah, it just annoys me. And just yeah. throw rocks, just throw rocks at orcs because that's the secret way to make them go down. Just throw pebbles at them. Yeah, I mean, part of the writing credit for the screenplay it goes also to Galmero, uh, Gilmero Del Toro, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I wonder, I wonder how much of his influence stayed in uh, because so the source material is a bit goofy. Uh, where they're just fighting it the entire time and. Uh, but but it, but as you kind of suggested, the thing with the Alfred, him dressing up as a woman and hiding and everything, that isn't in the book. And no. so so it is this kind of a mix where they were trying to make this movie a bit more serious, but then at the same time they did add all this comic relief in. Yeah, but it's like, just is odd odd mix. The, yeah, in the two towers where like they're handing out the weapons to the boys and the old men, you know, when they're all going to die. If you saw like some coward dressed up with with fake boobs in there, like <laughs> I think that would take away from it what they're trying to do. And I mean, I cried the first time I saw that, but this one I was, I was more like groaning than ever coming close to crying, except for when there were the dead elves because elves are immortal and they shouldn't die. <clears throat> See the Silmarillion VOK recaps <laughs> for more information. <laughs> are you planning on doing more or are you done? Yeah, we're no, no, we're doing uh, Baron and Luthien later this week. Actually, we oh, record okay. that on Monday. We took like a Christmas break, and scheduling is always tough with the European people spread all over so in a way i am kind of sad that this is done and there's probably no more material to come unless something changes and peter jackson gets more access to it or something but are we done with the trilogies you think or i mean are we done with this world in movie form for peter jackson at least because at least as long as christopher tolkien is you know in charge of the estate because he didn't like what he did with lord of the rings and he's not going to let him touch the silmarillion as far as i know um, so unless it's, he gets some like weird way where he could do like the tale of Turin, which was published as a separate novel basically, but it's from the Silmarillion. It's all oh, expanded material because Christopher Tolkien has been writing all sorts of stuff since Tolkien died. You know, the, he's done oh, Beowulf okay. and King Arthur and, but he's done a lot of, you know, the histories of middle earth and all that, but it's tough to film that stuff because it's all ancient history and there's no hobbits in it. So, <laughs> But I love the end, you know, having it end basically with the beginning of, of, of the fellowship. That was really clever. I liked how they did that and uh, getting to see the, uh, you know, the, the auction at his house. So I was glad they kept that in because that did add some levity, but it was kind of sad at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And and he didn't basically. Yeah, sure. He was chasing after the furniture and stuff. But the end, he kind of felt happy just to have the ring. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. Yeah. 
And also we see the part where uh, Tron gives him uh, Mithril armor and, and Bilbo is like, I don't care, whatever is this? <laughs> yeah, it's just for the fans, basically. And you, like, I like how he, it's like, it felt like they wrote the script and then they forgot they had to add like these major things. Like, oh yeah, tell Legolas to go look for Aragorn. Where, why does he have to go look for Aragorn? He's going yeah, to was... go meet him at the Council of Elrond. Like, it's, it's just like, hey, go buy the Lord of the Rings box set now. <laughs> Yeah, that was really strange. Uh, where Trandwell goes, oh, you want to go north and meet the Junadine or whatever. Just wait. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is like, what, 80 years before? So he's like, I mean, I know he was too, he's probably like in his 20s. So he's, he's not a kid, but he's still like, what? how would Thranduil even know about him? <laughs> yeah, that's true. What did you think about all the f- fancy Legolas stunts? I don't like Legolas. I don't like Orlando Bloom. I just, I can't. It's he's there for like eye candy, and I I just don't like it. And I yeah, he's a badass elf, but you know I liked it when he killed the elephant and he you know had a little thing with Gimli. But there's no Gimli in this, so he just comes off as like uh-huh. super arrogant, arrogant, and really like the best at everything. But uh, yeah, he does. He's very acrobatic and he does some cool stuff. But I, I'd rather watch the dwarves. You know, you, you know I was and crush some skulls. I was going to say exactly the same thing. His one-upmanship against Gimli is what made it acceptable and okay that he was able to like take an entire elephant by himself. Yeah. But here it just comes off as like, what the fuck? But I did like his little the battle he had with Bolg. That was pretty cool, you know, fighting gravity and the super orc at the same time. <laughs> hmm. I think we are done. Or do you have anything else you want to add? Oh no, let's not get all my my stuff out. Sorry, I can't make the main uh, the main discussion. Oh no, that's all right. I'm actually contractually obligated to have you on all of my podcasts. <laughs> Otherwise, all the fan girls and fan boys, uh, Greg's fan girls and fan boys, are gonna yell at me. So oh, that's why I had to do this. I was forced to do it. <laughs> no, it's all. It's wonderful to have you on, Greg. And I wish, really wish, you could have made it to the main podcast as well. <laughs> I have fun editing and say hi to the crew for me. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> Okay, uh, you have a good night. You too. Take it easy. Bye.